Very, very efficient. Fuller checks the runner now comes home. That misses low for ball two. <clears throat> Count two and oh. Outfield played him straight away. Left-handed batter. Cam to Tanner again, a, just a freshman out of North Little Rock, Arkansas. As he looks at a cold strike there, count moves to two and one. And two one pitch up coming. Fuller checks the runner at second. Now comes home. That's a that's line fouling out of play to the left. Count evens up, two balls, two strikes. Well, that hit the grill of a pickup, but by the time it did, it uh, had lost a lot of its speed. That's a line drive back up the middle, through for a base hit. Hawthorne's gonna make to turn from throw, or from third. Here's the throw in, it's gonna be wide. And Hawthorne scores from second on the RBI single from Camden Tanner. And the Weevils strike first. They lead it 1-0. Well, Sarah came in on that well. The ball kind of went up the first base side on him on the throw in. But uh, still, he, Hawthorne's got some wheels. Boy, it's almost like the, so far the Weevils picked up right where they left off. As hopefully that doesn't continue as the first baseman, Cade Cancia, will hit. As Fuller delivers low for ball one. And Silla, can't see again in game one, was two for four at the plate, scored a run. He also had three RBIs. Yeah, we need to find uh, that first out here. Get lucky, maybe we can get the double play, roll it up. That's a grounder hit foul down the third base side. Count evens up, one ball, one strike now. One one count for the hitter as Fuller delivers. Upstairs for ball two. Count moves to two and one now. Yeah, came out a little early out of his hand. And runner on first is Camden Tanner after that RBI single. My ball lifted down the right field line. Chasing is going to give chase. I think he's going to have a chance to make the play. Will is going to come up with it right down the line for the first out, and there's one down. Yeah, it's a good play. He had to cover a lot of ground to get there. Fortunately, he was kind of hanging up there. My bad, he does need a hitter, Chaz Poppy. Now to the plate was the catcher in game one, the DH today, Chaz Poppy, who was just tremendous at the plate in game one. Three for five, scored three runs. Also had four RBIs. He left one runner on as the first pitch misses high for ball one. Boy, as many as RBIs as he had, he didn't lead the team. Garrett hit three two-run home runs. He led the team with six. Here's the 1-0. Foul back to the net. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. Of course, game two of our doubleheader would just be a seven inning game. Again, one ball, one strike. Again, one out. Here in the first. As here's the delivery from Fuller up and in for ball two. Count moves to two and one now. He's had several that are up high in the zone. A little stronger push here, maybe can bring it down. 2 1 pitch. Fly ball lifted into left center. Will be Sarah who comes over. He'll make the grab. So back to back fly outs, and there's two down. As the second baseman, number nine, Chase Cripp, steps in, who's went 0 for 3 in game one. He did score a run. As he also walked once and struck out once as well.
First pitch to Cripps. That's across the plate for a called strike. Count is 0-1 now. Take a look at some of the other Great American Conference games as far as on the baseball side of things that have gone final today. Well, you want to know the surpriser of the day is that pitch is swung on and missed. Southwestern comes back down 6-2 to two to beat Southern Arkansas in Weatherford 7-6. to six. Yeah, that, that's not a surprise to me. I mean, that's just the nature of the game. Or at least I believe so. I'm not... I know they played a doubleheader today. That pitch upstairs. Here's the throw down by Vital. Did they get the runner at second? They did not. That's a stolen base for Camden Tanner. So runner in scoring position as the count will move to one and two. But Southern Arkansas, it looks like, did win game one 13 to nine. And Bulldogs won seven to six, or at least I assume it's whatever games they played two today. I don't yeah. know. Well, that second game may not be over, kind of like this, depending on, depending on when they started. Anderson State also just clubbed Southern Azarine 22 to five as that pitch misses outside. Count evens up two and two. Harding and Southeastern, they start around six o'clock. That game should be just getting underway in Searcy, Arkansas. So they'll play the doubleheader tomorrow then? That's what it looks like yeah. as that pitch misses. Count goes full three and two and then of course Arkansas Tech hosting East Central this weekend. A lot of games to keep an eye on. How jumbled these Great American Conference standings are. 3-2 pitch from Fuller, and it's ball four as he lost him. Runners now at first and second with two down. So now batting will be the left fielder, Kirk Wolf. He also had a good day at the plate. Went three for four, scored four runs, walked once, struck out once, and Left one runner on. Fuller checks the runner at second, comes home. As it's called strike one to Wolf. Caught the outside corner. No balls, one strike to the hitter, Kirk Wolf. That slapped right at third into the glove of Grace on the liner, and that'll do it for the Wonder Boys in the first, but they do pick up one run on two hits, no errors with two left on. Bottom of the first we go. Rangers do up when we come back. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. When was the last time you evaluated your investment goals? With our ever-changing environment, it's time. Talk to us about locking in a high, long-term fixed interest rate and put your money to work for you. I'm Whitney Gum, and here at ENJ Financial, we work with you to implement a custom plan to fit your financial goals. Call our office today at 580-327-2552 to book a complimentary financial review. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, member FINRA, SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Cambridge and ENJ Financial are not affiliated. KNS Tire and Alva has been locally owned and operated since 2004. While every business claims to be the best, KNS Tire is the best. Our satisfied customers speak for themselves by coming back to us each and every time. Our amazing services go beyond a regular tune-up or tire rotation. Our team is well-trained and able to take care of all your car care needs, including preventative maintenance, wheel alignment, brakes, and more. Visit knstire.com for more information or come see us at 2590 College Boulevard right here in Alva. The Tacoma Farmers Co-op is a proud supporter of Ranger and Goldbug activities since 1916. They have been here to serve you with all your farming and ranching needs with a wide range of goods and services from fuel, hardware, fencing, tires, feed and seed, plus fertilizer. They're here to meet your needs. Choose to trade with a co-op that gives its profits back to you. To learn about the Tacoma Co-op Advantage, stop by one of five locations in Moreland, Freedom, Winoka, Jet, and Tacoma, or visit them at tacomacoop.com and get a better service at a better place. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium as we move stadium as we move to the bottom of the first inning. Dylan Bradford will lead it off for the Rangers. Top of the second from Russellville, East Central, and Arkansas Tech are both tied at one. So we'll keep an eye on that game as we move throughout this one here tonight. Bradford went one for five at the plate, scored a run, struck out once in game one. He enters game two, hitting 378, 54 hits, and 143 at bats so far this season. 
the Rangers can get started here early against the starting pitcher today, which will give you the numbers on Charles Peacock, the 6'1 right-handed senior out of Dickinson, Texas, here momentarily as he delivers a called strike. Count is 0-1. Peacock with a 5.45 earned run average. He's 3-3, his 10th start of the year. 39 and two-thirds, 33 hits, 33 runs, just 24 of those earned, 40 walks to 64 strikeouts, which was team leading coming into the series as 0-1 is low for ball one. And Peacock teams are hitting just 214 against him this season. Whew. That's a pretty good ERA. Here's the 1-1. One -one. And he hits the batter as Bradford is hit by the pitch. So the Rangers put the leadoff runner on. They can answer here in the first. It's 1-0 Arkansas. <laughs> I said Arkansas Tech, but Arkansas Monticello. As Carson Wright will step in. Wright enters today hitting 393. 55 hits and 140 at bats. Was two for four earlier today with two runs. He also walked once as he looks at ball one. I think Coronado Cafeteria has noticed a dip in... Uh, Numbers <laughs> yeah. coming through the line today? Probably a little bit. Or somebody went in there and swiped, and they still came out here. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Count evens up 1-1 one, one, as that's a strike to Carson Wright. Wright with 55 hits, 140 bats, 37 runs, nine doubles, two triples, and 11 home runs. Ground ball hit to short, six to four, back to three, double play. And just like that, there's two down as... That's just the 17th time this season the Rangers have been into a double play. That's pretty remarkable, really. Yeah, when you've been able to turn, it was 32, he turned 16 before that one, so. Yeah. So Paul Sachin will hit. He was one for four. Scored a run, also walked once and left a runner on. Also struck out twice as goes around there for strike one. Sachin enters game two, hitting 267, 36 hits and 135 at bats, 26 runs. Third on the team in doubles with 10, one triple, five home runs, and 29 RBIs. The 0 1 pitch is across, catches the outside corner for a called strike. Count is 0 and 2. Came inside on that first pitch and then spotted that one mm -hmm. in the outside corner on the second pitch. Sachin, the junior outfielder out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Get him inside again. 0-2, oh, just get a piece to foul it off. Did Sachin. Watching those brats and hot dogs go by. And I, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like a trained animal. Right. Pavlov. You know what? I've had one, but why not a second? <laughs> that bitch swung on and missed for strike three, and the Rangers... We're going to order in the first. No runs, no hits, no errors with nobody left on. We move into the second. Rangers trail at 1-0 on the Community Bank scoreboard. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Naloxone is a medication designed to rapidly reverse opioid overdose. A person who is experiencing an overdose can't administer naloxone to themselves. Anyone can carry naloxone, give it to someone experiencing an overdose, and potentially save a life. That's why everyone should consider having naloxone. For more information, visit okimready.org. That's okimready.org. This program is funded by Northwestern Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Prevention Services and Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. 818 Diner has consistently provided the city of Alba with quality comfort food and great service since opening in 2019. Join us for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Some of our popular menu items to choose from include the BCB Burger, the French Dip, and our staples such as Terry's Chicken Fried Steak, Don's Hamburger Steak, and Joe's Chicken Tenders. Open Monday and Wednesday through Sunday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and open for dinner Wednesday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you want a variety of menu items and friendly service to give you that local diner feeling, visit 818 Diner right here in Alba. Dean Gall Real Estate and Auction has been serving clients in Oklahoma and Kansas for nearly 37 years. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, we are your real estate professionals. We will get you the top dollar for your property, whether it be at auction or private sale. Get with Dean Gall Real Estate and Auction if you're wanting to buy a ranch, good farmland, sell or lease minerals, or buy a home. Visit our website at deangallauction.com 
to browse available listings. Talk to Dean, Steve, or Todd at 580-327-8217 or stop by the office in Alva where you're always greeted with a smile. Come and see us. Shortstop eight and Garrett will lead it off as the first pitch from Fuller is too far inside for ball one. And Garrett a big day at the plate in game one. Three for five, scored three runs, six RBIs. And he also struck out twice. Hit three two-run home runs. Yeah, I'd take those two Ks and, and, and the other. <laughs> <laughs> As the 1-0 misses low, Cat moves to 2-0 now. Garrett again with those three home runs. Give him seven on the season. Now tied him for a team lead. Again, a big day at the plate. Here's the 2-0. This one's lifted down the left field line. Rangers will give chase, but it gets out of play. Count moves to two and one. Kind of impressive to have a shortstop that can hit for power like that. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and he's a left-handed batter, which is kind of unusual also. Here's the two one from Fuller. That's uh, lofted into shallow center down for a base hit and another hit this series for Garrett. That's hit number four and it's a leadoff single and back to back innings now. The Weevils had put the leadoff runner on. You know, I think he got it on the handle, but uh, you know, a good swing will push that ball out beyond the infield. And you gotta make now contact. Third baseman, As Brody Romero, the third baseman steps up to the plate. He was one for four today, scored a run, also struck out once. Alva City manager just went by. We've got uh, several innings of baseball tonight, folks, if you want to come out. Count is 0-1 as Fuller delivers a strike. We expect the lights to be flipped on here in the next probably 30, 45 minutes or so. But I think this is as much as I've seen in the stands, you know, and largely it has to do with, you know, the, the food, the free, you know, by the bowl and the dugout club and Wittitz, but... Also, it's nice weather. It's two good opponents. Uh, it's Friday, so good, great opportunity to come out to the ballpark tonight. We're still just in the uh, top of the second. 1-1 one, one count to Romero as Fuller throws over to first. Not in time getting back is Garrett. Bottom of the second in Russellville, Arkansas Tech leading East Central 2-1. to one. Fuller ready to go with a 1-1 one, one and the delivery. It's in there for a called strike. Can't lose to 1-2 to Brody Romero. I was listening to the Alva High School doubleheader coming back from Stillwater yesterday, and they're in a tournament over in Enid. Maybe the Merrifields tournament, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 they are playing, too, at Derek David Allen. Throw over. Getting back, though, is Garrett. And... Uh, I didn't catch the end of the second game. They were up, but Fairview was coming back. And then I hear win extra innings, and Alva won it. So they took two, got two wins yesterday. Not sure how they're doing today. One two pitch, just missed there. County was up two and two. You know, we told you Wachita Baptist put up 10 against Oklahoma Baptist the first inning. Well, that game's now in the seventh in Shawnee. It's 14 to 12, Wachita. <laughs> Anderson. Let's see here. That's the only current baseball game outside of this one going on. Is that pitch fouled back by Romero? Count evens up, or count stays at two and two. I think our soccer team travels tomorrow up to, I think it's Garden City for a, a friendly <clears throat> up there. We'll wish them luck. Two two pitch, on outside for ball three from Fuller. Count goes full three and two. Again, nobody out top of the second inning. UAM on top, 1-0. Throwing back over, getting back safely is Garrett ahead of the tag from Bradford. You know, I'd like to get a strikeout, throw him out here. Or just a double play the traditional way. Here it does have two stolen bases in three attempts as they throw back over once more. He gets back safely to first. And the count is full to Brody Romero. 
Nobody out, top of the second inning. Garrett with his lead from first. 3-2 pitch. This one's popped up. See who calls everybody off. I believe it's Bradford who makes the grab. He does. And there's one down. No, you want to get on? Now batting catcher, Noah Eskin. Again, one out here in the top of the second as Noah Estrom heads to the plate. Here's the delivery. That's in there for a called strike. Count is 0-1. Count is 0-1 to Estrom again, getting the start today behind home plate, a 254 hitter. His 21st start of the year, 17 hits and 67 at bats. Is that pitch up and end, Estrom, for ball one? Let's just try to stay on top of the hitters here. Throw back over, getting back is Garrett. Estrom again, his 22nd game played, but 21st start, 17 hits, 67 bats. Nine runs, does have four doubles, one home run to go along with seven RBIs this season. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fly ball lifted into shallow right. Sachin will come up. Looks like he will camp underneath it, make the grab. Runner will hold, and there's two down. So back to the top of the order we go with Rock Hawthorne. Hawthorne is one for one today. They doubled and scored a run back in the first. That's the difference in the game right now as UAM leads at 1-0. Here's the pitch. In there for a called strike from Fuller. Count is 0-1 to Hawthorne. If the umpire had any doubt, all he would do is look back here. We were both signaling strike. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 0-1. Hawthorne line shot back up the middle. That's through into center for a base hit. Two out single from Hawthorne, his second hit of the day. And runners now at first and second for UAM. Boy, he ripped that thing, didn't he? Well, he certainly did. That was through the infield before you could blink. Fourth hit of the series for Hawthorne and eight at bats. As now batting will be Camden Tanner. Singled. Stole a base back in the first. One for one today. As Tanner takes a called strike, count is 0-1. Tanner again came in hitting over 400 into this series. I have to imagine that dipped a little bit going one for five in game one, but not a whole lot. Here's the 0-1. Upstairs to Tanner. Count moves to one and one now. One ball, one strike to Camden Tanner. Fuller delivers. Fly ball lifted into left. Going back will be Carson Wright, and that one gets over the fence for a three run home run. Off of Camden Tanner, and it's now Arkansas Monticello leading it 4 0. You sure that didn't go through the fence or the wall? Boy, I did not think that was getting out of here when that was first hit. I didn't either. I thought he was just tracking back and he was going to catch it there, you know. Well, so it's 4 0 Weevils here in the second. As can see, it now will hit. He's 0 for 1 today. And see, 0 for 1 today flew out to right last time up. As there's the delivery, missing for ball one. As Fuller count moves to 1 and 0. When's the invasion of the cicadas? Yeah. Will that be? 
you know, the next couple innings if things don't turn around. <clears throat> 1-0 from Fuller. It paints the outside corner for a call strike. County bids up 1-1. One one pitch from Fuller, and got the outside corner again as the count moves to one and two now. That was, uh, I'll take that one. Looked like it was even off the black to me. <clears throat> and tried it again. It looked like it was nearly in the same spot. Didn't get the call. County was up two and two. Yeah. Umpire Emeritus next to us, though, thought that it was outside. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fly ball into center. It should be the final out as Trevor Sear will come up, make the grab, and that'll do it. But the Weevils do plate three more runs on three hits, no errors, with nobody left on. Bottom of the second we go. Rangers in a hole early as they trail it 4-0 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Spring is here, and so are the savings at G&G Home Furnishings in Alva. Right now, it's our annual anniversary sale happening through the month of April. Mattresses starting at $2.99, Lazy Boy recliners at $4.99, sofas at $3.99, Dining room sets at $5.99 and bedroom sets starting at just $3.29. Don't miss out on all the savings throughout the month of April, so stop in and browse during our anniversary sale happening at G&G Home Furnishings located at 2107 College Boulevard right here in Alba. Looking for the best in lawn care? Peak Environment has you covered. We offer a wide range of services, including full-service mowing, weed control, Christmas light installation, and more. Peak Environment provides efficient and affordable services across northwest Oklahoma with branches in Alva, Enid, and Woodward. Call our office today at 580-748-8003 for a free quote on any service. That's Peak Environment, 748-8003. Proud supporter of all Ranger and Goldbug Athletics. The Alva Moose Lodge is a proud supporter of all Northwestern and Alva public school activities and strives to be the heart of the community through fundraisers and community-based events that make a difference in the lives of individuals, kids, and families throughout Northwest Oklahoma. On a national basis, the Moose Fraternity provides at-risk children with a second chance at life and its senior members a comforting retirement at its five-star senior facility in Florida. If you would like to see how you can help make a difference in the lives of those in need, stop by the Alva Moose Lodge Monday through Saturday from 4 p.m to 10 30 p.m at 3027 street to learn more welcome back as chad green will lead it off as we move to the bottom of the second northwestern leading or trailing four to zero on the community bank school board to arkansas monticello as there's a delivery missing low for ball one county wins up one one to chad green it'll be chad green followed by higgin barcelo and trevor sayer as again here in the second we got some stratton in the hole Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Count moves to 1-2. and two. Also joining us, member of the Ranger Dugout Club, former Ranger baseball player as well, Matt Stratton. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. God, the grub, the spread. Are you kidding me? Not bad, right? <laughs> it's great. Yeah, Pete and, I, Pete and Wittitz, man, they, they killed it. Oh, I know. I'm looking at folks out there, and they're just sitting back. Their eyes are kind of glazed <laughs> over. It's like, I'm so full. <laughs> yeah, right. Or maybe I'm just talking about me. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 two, two to Green, fouled back over the press box. I know you guys had a lot to do with this, too, kind of help putting this on. And yeah, it, it actually – Talk about that. Yeah, it actually it, – it, it kind of came to, came together pretty quickly. Uh, uh, Pete and I were talking, uh, the, the Angry Bull Saloon, we were talking, and and we decided, you know, this is a, this is a pretty big series. And so we, we said, hey, like, let's, let's put something together, try and get as many people out here as we can, and – you know, support the program and do all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, um, honestly, the, the turnout's been fantastic. We, uh, we, we well, honestly, I think we're about out of food. And, and so it's, uh, it's been pretty awesome so far. Green struck out swinging for one out as Hagen Barcelo steps in. And I know you're obviously part of the dugout club, kind of, uh, you know, if anybody's out there listening wants to be a part of that, uh, kind of the perks of joining with the dugout club. Yeah, so uh, so one of the things that, that we always try to do is, is – we uh, the dugout club helps supplement the uh, the budget for the baseball program, and so we uh, we try to do at least you know kind of one big purchase every 
every other year or every every year, you know, depending on the needs or what they need. And so, uh, um, the the. I think the next big thing that's that's coming up is uh, we're we're about at the end of life on the the current turf out here, and so I think the dugout club is going to be uh, be be helping with that. Well, oh, that is crushed by here. Hagen Barcelo, and folks, we just had a tie ball game on a solo home run and a bomb hit by Hagen Hagen Barcelo. Score tied at one now. That looked like a three wood just drove it out of here. Four one. Yeah, my apologies. I was wondering about these hand signals were going on. Yeah. It's like, you guys take a, that class, that foreign language class, sign language? The Rangers are on the board now, drilling by three here in the bottom of the second. But go ahead, Matt, yeah, continue. So that's, that's like I said, is what we try to do is we, we try to be, uh, you know, we try to help out with big purchases throughout the year. And, uh, and, and we're, obviously we're not limited to that. Um, you know, like if they're on a, on a long road trip or something like that, rather than eating – fast food or, or you know something like that or, or sandwiches at the hotel there uh, you know we'll pay for you know kind of a nicer restaurant and that kind of stuff and so uh, um, really we're, we're we're really not limited to big purchases but uh, that's that's kind of uh, kind of what we try to help with uh, again like I said I think the last thing we we helped with was re replacing the net um, the, the backstop uh, out here and so uh, um, but again, like I said, the, I think the next big thing is going to be helping replace the turf and, and that kind of stuff because it's about at the it's about at the end of life. So, one two count for Trevor Sayre. Get one out and the pitch. That's a high chopper hit to third. Romero will charge. Here's the throw. It's not in time. B get out of Sayre for the infield hit. Well, and I would think that Coach Bowen's pretty frugal too with any monies that comes his way for his <laughs> club. I don't, I don't, I don't see him as being reckless. No, no, and good and steward of the month, uh, of the funds, and, and absolutely, and and so uh, um, it, it it does kind of go through a little bit of a of, of a process, approval process, and that kind of stuff. That being said. Um, at, at least in, in my knowledge, I don't think we've ever said no to, to anything a coach has wanted. Uh, not yet, um, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, as, as far as, um, you know, like whether or not they need an extra bat or, or you know, another couple buckets of, uh, of baseballs for batting practice or, or you know, honestly, really wh whatever they need is, is really what this uh, – what, what the fundraising is for. And so uh, – um, like I said, we, we, we've done some pretty big purchases or helped uh, with some pretty big purchases over the last, uh, the last four or five years. And, and we, you know, we have our, our uh, dugout club golf tournament, which uh, is... Uh, I was going to ask you about that, if you got, got a date set and a yeah, date mine. Yeah, we do. Um, it is actually the, the last Saturday of August this year. I believe it's the 26th. I'm not 100% on that. Um, it's even, it may be the, the 24th or 26th. I can't remember, like I said. But it is... Uh, the, the, the last Saturday or second to last Saturday, because actually I believe the, the last Saturday of August may be the end of the month. Two balls, two strikes to the hitter, Colby Grace. Again, the runner on first with one out. Yeah, so the, the, the golf tournament is actually the 24th of August this year. Um, we, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always a, a really great turnout. We have, a, we have a lot of alumni that come back for it. We have, uh, you know, we always have a lot of fun. We have a lot of perks uh, for, for coming back and playing, playing in this golf tournament. Really, it's always, uh, it's always a pretty good time. 3-2 pitch is upstairs for ball four as Sarah goes to second. Now runners at first and second, just one out here. Bottom of the second as Zach Vitol, the catcher, will hit. So, again, uh, people are wanting to register. Where, where can they go or kind of get, um, to get in contact with? Yeah, so um, we, we do have our uh, our Dugout Club Facebook page. We do have a Twitter page, uh, you know, for, for the social media users. Um, we do have our, our uh, we do have links out there on the, on Northwestern's uh, website and, and all that kind of stuff. And so we uh, it's it's very easy to join. Um, uh, my numbers out there, Ryan Hindergard's numbers out there. Um, so really, honestly, just if if you need if you feel like you need to donate or, or, or whatever you need to do, just uh, you can reach out to to myself to to Ryan Hindergard um, and, or you. Can visit Northwestern's page uh, because we uh, we've made it now uh, to where you can you can join the dugout club online and and so you don't have to actually have a have a physical uh, form or anything like that and so uh, it's uh, it, it definitely helps every every dollar helps um, especially like I said with uh, 
with some of the purchases and and, th and needs that are that are coming down the pipeline for the next couple of years. So. Well, and everybody who joins has got quite the setup here in, inside the press box, especially on a day where it's really, really cold or if it's really, really hot, one of those two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, um, that, that being said, we, we, we do absolutely have le different levels of uh, of uh, um of donation or donation levels. That being said, is is we have we have absolutely never turned any way, anybody away from from sitting inside and, and getting out of the weather and that kind of stuff. And so, um, and so I know Brandon Brinkley. He's standing here. He's always been a big proponent of the dugout club, and and he uh, he's just an all around good guy. No, he, but he's he's thought we needed floor to ceiling mirrors in here. Well. <laughs> Count as one and one to Zach Vitale. I mean, that's a fair enough argument because he's awful pretty. I mean, he likes looking at himself. In well, he's tall the too. I mean, so like, yeah, it can't be just <laughs> my kind of height mirror. <laughs> one, one one pitch misses into the turf. Two and one with one out runners at first and second. I think he's run by that by Coach Bowen. Yeah, no, well, I'll uh, I'll definitely put it on the agenda for the for you the next go round. Good on uh, barrels or yeah, it, requesting it on behest of Brinkley. Yeah, and and honestly, like I'm I'm totally uh, you know I'm willing to contract out you know bringing y'all breakfast burritos and that kind of stuff every every, every 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 Saturday. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we got an early game tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> kind of gets <laughs> just throwing it out there. <laughs> We've been spoiled by Maddie's <laughs> cooking, that's for sure. So, but no, like like I said. Days like today, or, or you know that 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 hot dogs and apple pie that they had in Enid. Uh, That's it. Back through for a base hit by off the bat of Vitol. As Sarah is going to round second, he's headed for home, but he's actually going to retreat back to third. Bases are going to be loaded. It was a pretty good throw back in from center from Hawthorne, but bases loaded here for the Rangers. Yeah, I guess he had to hesitate, make sure that was going to go through the infield. Otherwise, he'd have had a you know, probably a, a scoring jump on that hit. Had to hold him up, be safe, just one out. But we need to get him home. You know, we, we've seen this somewhat where we're not getting him home, taking advantage of the uh, scoring position. Uh, all we need is a, is a high fly ball at this point, I think. <laughs> yeah. well, shortstop Jacob Wiltshire will bat as first pitch catches the corner. Count moves to 0-1 to Wiltshire. A former pitcher, Matt Stratton, I, I don't, believe you can be any pitcher and come to Northwestern and escape having nightmare home runs that, uh, you know, haunt you years later. No, no, a a absolutely. That's, uh, um, you know, 99% of the games out uh, here at Northwestern's field, the wind's blowing out and, and, uh, and it, it, it definitely, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a catch 22 because with, with uh, pitching into that wind, you get another, you know, six to eight inches of break on your on your curveball and your change up and that fastball runs just a little bit more than it normally would that being said you get a ball up in the air there's a good chance that it's going to end up leaving the yard so um so yeah and and i do i do actually hold the the dubious honor uh, as far as uh, coach phillips will tell you of uh giving up the longest home run in northwestern history so <laughs> oh i um, bet you've got a I bet you have to pry that information out of Coach Phillips. Oh, yeah, so. abso absolutely. He, uh, he only brings that information out on special occasions, maybe <laughs> once or twice a, I don't know. A week? I don't, yeah, a week, probably. <laughs> he, he still sends me text messages saying, hey, you remember that home run you gave up? <laughs> that being said, I will say that uh, this kid, honestly, like, he was, he was easily 6'8". Probably 6'2", but, but easily 6'8". <laughs> um, he, he, he was probably about 260, 270 pounds. Wind was blowing straight out about, you know, 40, 45 miles an hour. I mean, it was, it was about a 30, 35, 40 degree day outside. And uh, I made the mistake of uh, piping a fastball to this big old lefty, and, man, he did not miss. So... Uh, it's about Mike Trout, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I, I think, I, honestly, I think that's actually the kid's name. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not 100%, but I believe that's actually was what his name was. So Bradford swings and misses there as Wiltshire struck out. It is a 1-2 count to Bradford. Again, bases loaded with two down, bottom of the second. Now we had Mike Perkins on the radio earlier, and he was talking or on the headset earlier, and he was talking about how the air is light here and when the wind blows. There's mm -hmm. just going to be home runs. No. That's he sure had his share of them. That's one, two is a yeah. ground ball down the first base side as Kinsia and threw that one away as he was trying to go back to the pitcher covering first Peacock. And that one sails past him, and a run will come in to score from third as Trevor Sayre scores. 
And the Rangers now trail it four to two. I'm glad nobody was hurt on that play. That was a good effort by Monticello. I just, just couldn't catch the throw. Carson Wright now will bat. Base hit would likely tie the game. Again, the tying run is at second. Base is loaded once more for Northwestern. You know, if we rally big time, we can just, Matt's just going to have to stay here the rest of the game. And you know, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. I always <laughs> enjoy stopping by and seeing you all and, and, uh, and, and, you know, giving my input on things and talking about the dugout club. So I'm always, I'm always willing to come hang out with you all for a little bit. Well, and one thing that... Oh, oh, one pitch is swung out and missed. Count yeah. 0 and 2 to right. He was not on his first at bat. But one of the things that I... And I hope that Dust Dustin allows me, allows us. <laughs> you know, a lot of broadcast crews just are just them, and that's it. And it's nice to have, I think, visitors and well on. And I, I will tell you that once upon a time, I was actually the original Stephen Barrows because <laughs> back back before you became a, a, a regular uh, occurrence on the broadcast, um, Dustin would call me and, and actually have me come help him. You know, do uh, do a little bit of commentary and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, I mean, one two I, pitch is fouled back out of play. I, I don't want to say that you know I'm I'm better at it, but I mean it's. Uh, <laughs> you were before me. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, the originator. I mean, I was, I was the original Stephen Barry. Hey, and I loved having the help. <laughs> Doing a double header by yourself oh is absolutely oh. brutal. But now with the crowd mic, obviously helps out a lot. When yeah, you're sure. when you're in here without the the crowd mic and there's no sounds of the game, which everybody gets to enjoy over the last several years, it gets a little tough. Well, I just grew up listening to, you know, Jack Buck, Mike Shannon, Harry Carey, and, you know, a, a broadcast is supposed to be fun as well as informative. No, and, and, and that's honestly, I mean. Right line shot down the right field line is foul. That, that's honestly one of my favorite things is whenever I'm unable to, uh, to make, you know, make it out here to, to actually watch the games as I always try to follow along on, on YouTube or on, on, you know, listening to the radio and that kind of stuff. And so I always, um, one of my favorite things is always, uh, well, like the the other day, whenever uh, you uh, posed the question about the, uh, the the mud that is actually oh, yeah. used to rub down the baseballs yeah. and that kind of it stuff, and so I always I always enjoy listening to you guys go uh, back and forth, and uh, and and so I always enjoy you know sending text messages, whether it's giving you a hard time or actually <laughs> answering questions like I did the other day. So uh, so I was I always have a good time listening to you guys. Two two pitch. That's a fly ball lifted down the right field line. Will land in foul territory off the bat of right. We'll do it again at two and yeah. two. This is America's pastime. It's it's not combat. And so you know I mean sometimes sports can get too uh, what's the word uh, too focused too monocular. Um, anyway, baseball is built for conversation, description. 2-2, two -two. that one got away from the catcher, Estrom. Scoring from third is Colby Grace, and the Rangers have cut into the lead once more. It's now 4-3 to three as Vital moves to third, Bradford to second. Count goes full 3-2. and two. And, you know, I, I thought it was Mississippi mud, but it's always troubled me. How in the world do they punish the umpires? Because <laughs> I consider it punishment. Doing all those balls. Before a game, so it's it's actually and 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 honestly, I I don't know if it's if it remains the same as as what it was whenever I played, but um, we would actually um, and this was this was actually one of my duties whenever um, whenever I was on an off cycle day, um, as far as um, I wasn't in the uh, I wasn't starting that day, so I would always go in and they would have uh, we would just get a dozen baseballs out, a brand new you know box of pearls. And uh, we had a we had a just a little oh like a little pint jar and it, and and honestly the only reason why I know is because I did this so many times is it, it legit is called Mississippi mud yeah. and so uh, um, that was always one of my, my my duties again like I said whenever I wasn't whenever I wasn't starting uh, starting that day was I would I'd come in and uh, I'd, I'd get the, the the brand new box of baseballs out and I would just sit there and 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 start rubbing the baseballs down and so. Uh, um, and, and again, again, uh, like I said, if I wasn't wasn't going to be pitching that day, uh, I would always just kind of keep track of how many baseballs we had, and if I had to open up a new box and start kind of rubbing them down and, and uh, getting them ready to go. So, uh, so like I said, it's it's very much not the umpires. At least it wasn't back. Uh, and and well, I, I hope I'm not showing my age, but <laughs> by, by saying back in my day, but 
But back in my day, that's that's uh, that's that's kind of how one we did two it. pitch. There's a fly ball yeah, lifted into left. That might get out of here. Back towards the wall. Oh, Was it caught? That? No, it's it's gone. That's yes. a home run. A shot by Paul Sage, and we had to wait on that for a second. That was a three-run home run as Wolf went up to the wall to grab it, and the ball kind of just disappeared. You didn't know if it got over the wall or it went into his glove. <laughs> that's that's always impressive whenever you can deke about 400 or 500 people that's at this game right now. Yeah, that wasn't a granny. Yeah. Because oh, you're right. No, a grand slam. Yeah, that was a grand slam off the bat of Paul Sage, and. Boy, just like that, the, this game has changed as the Rangers put up seven and one in the first game, and now they've done it again here in game two with seven in the bottom of the second. Well, as we said in the first game, a lot of game left. <laughs> so well, just have to keep on top. I guess I'll just have to hang around a little bit longer, I guess. Yeah. So. Well, and you're talking about mud on the balls. I'm, I'm talking about the Major League uh, umpires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we have a good family friend that he recently retired from MLB umpiring. Green hits a ground ball down to third, fielded by Romero, across in time, and I believe that's the final out. As Rangers actually batted around here in the second. As Northwestern picks up seven runs on five hits, no errors with nobody left on. We head to the third. Rangers leading at 7-4 on the Community Bank School Board. Back to Meyer Stadium after this. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Keeping your car clean is an inexpensive way to protect its value. Shirley Shine Car Wash, located west of Love, offers a six-bay self-serve car wash, including three truck bays. Your wash options include soap, tire cleaner, foamy brush, wax, spot-free rinse, and air chamois. And you can pay with credit, debit card, or quarters. Don't just clean the outside, clean the inside with its self-serve car vacuum. You can also clean your pet with their self-serve dog walk. Company vehicle? Be sure to ask about our fleet account. So the next time your vehicle needs rinse or detailed, come by Shirley Shine Car Wash, located right here in Alva. At Ignite Physical Therapy, we assist in the therapy of many different aspects, such as advanced problem solving, joint mobilization, treatment of adverse neural tension, evaluation and treatment of muscle imbalance, tissue-specific exercise, and patient education. Dr. Jared Hayda and staff want to get you back to the life that you had before your injury. They have helped so many for rehabilitation, and they can do the same for you. Stop by and see the staff at Ignite Physical Therapy on 521 Street or make an appointment by calling 580-327-3331. We know how much love your pet gives you. We're Ridgeview Veterinary Hospital. We're always here for you and your pet. Ridgeview Vet Hospital provides the most comprehensive care from regular checkups to emergency. Ridgeview Vet Hospital proudly provides veterinary services to all animals, large or small. Visit us today to let Dr. Lohman and his staff take care of your extended family located right here in Alva or call us to schedule your appointment at 580-327-0201. Ridgeview Vet Hospital is a proud supporter of Alva and Northwestern activities. The DH, Chaz Poppy will lead it off as we open up here in the top of the third inning. First pitch was a strike. Chaz Poppy followed by Chase Cripps and Kirk Wolf. Due up for the Weevils here in the third. Rangers leading at 7-4. to four. As it's quickly 0-2 to Poppy. It appears as if they are still serving brats and dogs in the sides over there. We... We definitely, we, we ordered an awful lot. So, um, honestly, at this point, if, if somebody leaves the ball game hungry, that's, uh, we, we kind of figure that's their fault. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we have got plenty over there. We still have plenty over there. Um, there's still plenty of baseball left. So, if, if you're not here and you're, you're in the area, you probably better get here, come get dinner, watch, watch the, uh, the tail end of this baseball game and, and, and hopefully Rangers will be able to pull out a W here but on this one. Between that, the, the sugar rush with the snow cones. 2-2 <laughs> yeah. pitch from Fuller. That's a high chopper hit to short. Wiltshire will field. Throw to first in time. It's a 6-3 put out of Poppy. And there's one down here in the third. Of course, Rangers back in action tomorrow noon, the final game of the series, and then be traveling, no, making the road trip to Tahlequah next week on Tuesday to take on Northeastern State. As Chase Cripps steps into the batter's box. That pitch swung on and missed. Count is 0-1 to Cripps, who 
walked in his last at bat. That was back in the first inning. Here's the 0-1. That's in there for a called strike count quickly. 0 and 2. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Steve fired up here just for a second. Um, no, no. <laughs> what, what, what what do you think about this one knee catching stance that, oh, that, that yeah. we've got going on right here? That's a fly ball lifted down the right field line. Sage it looks like he's got a beat on it. He'll camp underneath it and make the grab. And there's two down. I just know Matt that the era I grew up in. I'm very partial to, and so I guess it's hard to accept change a little bit. Uh, I understand that the younger, the youngins, <laughs> swear by the change, and and I understand that. You just it's hard to compare eras, but uh, I, I'm I'm the Pete Rose Charlie Hustle era. No, anything that smacks of less than 100% hustle, uh, I balk at. That's whether it's running out a ball, whether that's coming back to the dugout after you struck out, looking at a third strike or something. I, it's just hustle. No, and, 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 and I absolutely understand that, and I agree with you to a point. But, man, that I just – there's something about that one knee catcher stance that I just – man, I really enjoy it. I, I, I think there's there, – uh, there, there's something to it. That being said, I will agree with you uh, – Whenever there's runners on, especially on second and third, uh, probably not the time to do it. But man, that that there's there's just something that uh, that that I, I, makes me kind of wish that that again back in the day, whenever I was pitching, that that was a thing. Because man, that's just it, it seems to me like that just with with as wide as they get, that is just a really big target to be throwing to. Two one pitch from Fuller misses low and outside for ball well, three to Kirk Wolf. I you know, I caught a couple of games occasionally as a as a kid, but sure. never at the higher level. But I did umpire a lot. And uh, I I think some of the thinking about the one knee is is uh is framing the pitch maybe and catching it and up. Well yeah. And as an umpire umpires are, are stupid. Call well. Ooh, I thought that was strike three. They, uh, you know, you, you call the right, strike, well, strike not, two, sorry. not based on what the catcher's doing, but Count goes full three and umpire. two. <laughs> but what you see is an umpire. Yeah. No, no, and and I absolutely, uh, like I said, I absolutely understand that. And uh, again, like I said, is is it, it absolutely comes down to 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 a frame job, but uh, it's uh, it, it's more for those those low pitches because I've actually I've actually done a lot of reading and and, and good note just to catch you up here. Uh, uh, Steve and I have had uh, many, many uh, conversations about this before. He filed a protective order. Well, that's that's my finger. I'm sure I was there for the moves. Well, I mean, we had yeah, that. yeah, I mean, he, he as got, Kirk Wolf walked at him, uh, Aiden Garrett will bat. I mean, he, he he did. You know, I mean, he got after me a couple times. He, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying he took it too far. I mean, the people that were there that night said that you know maybe maybe wasn't the best thing that he did. <laughs> But <laughs> so and we are in Garrett. We are embellishing big time here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but but no, yeah. I mean, that's like I said. I've actually I've I've done a lot of digging on this and and that kind of stuff. Just uh, um, you know, just just out of curiosity. I mean, I always try to keep up on uh, on some of the the, the new trends uh, in in baseball and that kind of stuff. And this is actually one that I'm I'm on board with. Well, I, I mostly. I, I would say mostly on board with, yeah. and, and, and by mostly, I'd say probably 60-40. But it's so, situational. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So Well, and there's a lot of changes over the years in baseball, and like I said, it's going back to kind of what you grew up with, and you uh, remember the magic of, uh, you know, for me, the magic of the Cardinals in the late 50s and the 60s and the 70s was my time. No, and, and, and again, you know, you and I have always, and, and, we we've had this this same conversation before. Is uh, um, actually my my uh, my high school job was uh, running board op for Chisholm Trail Broadcasting out of Enid, and so uh, we were a flagship station for the Cardinals. And so uh, growing up uh, listening to Mike Shannon and uh, um, you know he uh, he he was he was he's one of my favorites uh, uh, as far as a, a broadcaster or play by play guy you know kind of thing. Uh, Especially once you hit about the seventh, eighth, eighth inning, whenever he got <laughs> he, he got several uh, several Bud Lights into the into the broadcast. So it, um, we do have a mound uh, visit happening right now. That brought to you by G and G Home Furnishings. Umpires asking if there's still some brats left. 
just wants one. Yeah, he, he just, just wants one. one. Just one. Yeah. yeah. It is a two-one count to the hitter Aiden Garrett with two down and a runner on first. Cheap sunglasses. Again, here in the top of the third, Rangers leading it seven to four. Both teams with five hits apiece. Neither team has committed an error to this point. As that misses outside, count goes to three and one now. Well, uh, talking dugout club and baseball history and well, all I'm the sure crowds here. Back this, we need to win this game. No, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, gosh. Yeah, this is a big one this weekend for the Rangers as that pitch misses upstairs for ball four. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Fuller. Runners at first and second now as I think we're going to start to see some action in the Ranger bullpen as Brody Romero will bat with two down. And I'm sure the dugout club, you know, obviously the Rangers on pace to make the conference tournament. Uh, it'll be an exciting thing for uh, the dugout club members to be able to get to see, if, especially if it, if it plays out for Northwestern, if you get to host at home. Yeah, no, I mean, that's always, uh, um, that's always obviously, I mean, the goal is, is, uh, if you get to uh, if you get to host, you know something in the in the, the end of season conference tournament. I mean, that's always uh, that's a reward for what you've done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's a reward for your fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's it's always uh, it's always it's postseason baseball, man. There's there's just there's not a whole lot else like it uh, uh, out there, and so uh, it everybody just seems to chopper um, to third, fielded by Grace, throw in time, five three put out. Uh, he comes in really well and footwork's right. He gets that throw over there. Bradford with a nice stretch. Got him by a full stride. In the third, no runs, no hits, no errors for the Weevils. We move to the bottom of the third. Rangers do it when we come back. They lead at 7-4 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Your agency of choice for all types of insurance is McDermott Insurance in Alva. For home, auto, farm, or business insurance, the McDermott Agency will protect what you value most by providing the best coverage and client service possible. To get your custom professional insurance review, call McDermott Insurance at 580-327-3500 or visit them at 526 Flynn Street in Alva. McDermott Insurance. They can't predict the future, but they can insure it. Alva Health and Wellness is Alva's newest healthcare option, offering a broad array of services geared to address today's most common illnesses and injuries. Alva Health and Wellness offers services for you and your child, including sickness, wellness, chronic care management, vaccinations, weight loss, and so much more. Find more information online by visiting alvahealthandwellness.com or come by and make an appointment with Jeremy Logston in person at 515 College Avenue right here in Alva. Don't miss the Monster Truck Spring Nationals. One giant show this Saturday, 8 p.m. Crystal Beach Stadium, Woodward, Oklahoma. See the baddest trucks on the planet in ground-pounding, car-crushing action, including Animal House, driven by the world's youngest female driver. She's only 15 years old. She'll take on Dysfunctional, Kicking and Screaming, Redneck Rampage, and Sergeant Smash. Don't miss the Oklahoma Tough Truck Contest, where locals run for cash. Special VIP box seats and pit passes. Include a to the pre-show pit parties with trucks, autographs, and kids meet Batman, plus a superhero souvenir. You can even take a ride in a real monster truck. Tickets available at United Grocery, Napa, Cowboy Tax Shop, Woodward Steel, at the gate, or online at showclix.com. Sponsored by Advanced Real Estate Advisors, and Cool, Brothers Collision, Northwestern Electric Go-Op, k &S Tire, Red Prairie, SPC, Red Dirt Gun and Pawn, and Great Plains Bank. Monster Trucks from National, this Saturday, Woodward. Be there. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium out of our commercial break. An 0-2 count to Higgin Barcelo leading it off for the Rangers. As that one just off the end of the bat foul. It'll be Barcelo followed by Sarah and Colby Grace. You know, Maddie just captured a picture of the three of us. If we had those floor-to-ceiling mirrors, it would have been real easy just to, I mean, <laughs> yeah. point and shoot. Well, so actually what I'm going to do is as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go to Walmart, I'm going to get that printed off, and I'm going to have you guys autograph it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I'm going to put it on my dartboard. And, and, uh, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> touche. <laughs> Count is 0-2 again to Barcelo, who he's one for one today. Had a solo home run last time up, got the Rangers on the board. 
0-2 pitch, line drive it a left for a base hit, and it's a leadoff runner on for the Rangers. Man, that's big, especially after you uh, you have a big inning like that in the second, and then you uh, you come out in the top of the third and put up a knot, and then you lead off the runner gets on. That's, you just got to have multiple innings instead of just the one big inning. Yeah, they, uh, the, 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 the the timely hitting is uh, is uh, obviously it's always easier said than done, but but man, that. Uh, well, that's well. The teams that go deep, that's what they do. Oh, absolutely. Right, it looks I mean, like I don't mean deep in yard, but I mean in the standings <laughs> and race. Sure. We're going to have a visit to the mound, brought to you by G and G Home Furnishings, and I think we are going to have a call to the bullpen, as that will close the door today on Charles Peacock. We'll talk about the new pitcher. This call the bullpen, brought to you by Ignite Physical Therapy. Discuss the new pitcher after this. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network, 105.7. Alva State Bank and Trust Company, older than Oklahoma, big enough to serve you and small enough to know you. We love to give back to our customers. Did you know Alva State Bank offers a great rewards checking account program? That's right. You can earn cash back or high interest with our Casasa account. We will even refund you up to $25 in ATM fees. How do I qualify? It's simple. Just swipe your debit card 12 times, sign up for online statements, and have one ACH credit or debit post to your account. Can I do it online? Yes. Just visit our website at www.alvastatebank.com to see if our Casasa Rewards program is right for you. We make banking easy. Whether you're at home, the office, or in your car, our online or mobile banking options help you juggle busy schedules and financial needs. We plant roots where others have branches. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium as we have a call to the bullpen brought to you by Ignite Physical Therapy. For the Weevils, they will go to the 5'10 junior right-hander out of Glendale, Arizona, number 31, Ruben Macias. Numbers on Macias this season, an 8.06 earn run average, his 13th appearance. He's gone 22 and a third, 25 hits, 24 of those, 24 runs, 20 of those earned. Seven walks to 14 strikeouts. Teams are hitting 281 against Macias this season. As the first batter that Macias will come in and face will be Trevor Sayre. Got a dugout club member trying to figure out how we can have Marcello up every inning. Yeah, right. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to have a bunch of run production. Is there, so a guy is there cloning? Can we do that yet? <laughs> <laughs> That'll get Barcelo two for two today. And that solo home run and of course the single right before the pitching change where you get Charles Peacock. And, and the one thing the Rangers have been able to do is get to the starter. You know, when you look at it, they did a good job of getting to Irvin. He came in with a tremendous ERA at 3.47. Uh, Peacock again at three and three coming in and had led the team in strikeouts. The Rangers able to get to him early. So see what Trevor Sayre can do at the plate. He is one for one today. Singled and scored a run last time up as there's a towering fly ball in the left center. This one going back towards the wall and it is gone. Two run home run for Trevor Sayre. And the Rangers add to their lead. They now lead it nine to four. Just get it up into that jet stream and that thing just carried, didn't it? That looked like a long chip shot. Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a ball hit harder than that. Um, that, that one was, uh, what, what, what's the term, non-wind dated? Yeah. That's the third home run now hit by the Rangers. Of course, there were five hit by the Weevils in game one as now Colby Grace will bat. He'll take a called strike and Boy, how about that? You bring in a new pitcher and the first pitch is a two-run jack. Welcome to the game. Yep, yep. that's uh, that's always kind of a, a, a gut check uh, or reality check kind of thing. Is I think if you've pitched at all or very much, that's happened to you. And once or <laughs> once or twice, I mean. I, well, I mean for all pitchers. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah. don't. You don't want it to happen on a regular basis. No, and and, and honestly, like we said, uh, you know, like we were talking about earlier, is uh, um, I mean, there is very rarely a game uh, at Northwestern's field that the wind is not blowing out. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, 
one of my one of my favorite games to have ever pitched in uh, during my tenure at Northwestern was uh, it was uh, one two pitch. That's another fly ball. This one to deep center off the bat of Grace, and he's got another home run. That is season for Colby Grace. Back to back shots by the Rangers as they now lead it ten to four. That might have gone into Kevin and Rhonda Field's backyard. <laughs> Fourth home run hit today by the Rangers. Folks, we're still here just in the bottom of the third. <laughs> okay. This, one, this one's shaping up to be a marathon. Huh? Yeah, a little bit. Now the good news is for the Rangers is they're the ones on top. And they had a 7-2 to lead in game one. Yeah. They're up 10-4, to four, though, here now. Yeah, we had a bigger lead in the first game than we do now. There's a delivery to Vital for a strike. He singled and scored a run last time up in the second. Rangers now with 10 runs on eight hits so far here this evening. And the 0-1. That's crushed into right. That's going to be right at the right fielder, Tanner. He comes up, makes the grab. And there's one down. As the shortstop, Jacob Wiltshire will bat. 0 for 1 today. Struck out last time up in the second where the Rangers batted around. And the Rangers can continue to add to this lead. Again, they lead it 10 to 6, trying to even up the series with a rubber match tomorrow. Throw it inside for ball one from Wiltshire. I always get a kick out of listening to Chris Ruwald do, uh, do the, the, the announcing for this. It's The 1-0 pitch, ground ball down the third baseline is hit foul. I just, I don't know if there's anyone better at it, maybe, <laughs> with the exception of maybe Matt Adair. Yeah, but, yeah, I was going to uh, say, he's, he's yeah, kind of, but we can't get him out here for a baseball game. <laughs> I mean, he, busy schedule, man. He, <laughs> he's, in, he's in high demand, I understand. <laughs> I heard Dan Patrick couldn't even get a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> couldn't even get him to commit to a time. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Dan was saying, well, we'll do it remotely. You don't have to come here, Matt. We'll <laughs> yeah. Two balls, one strike to Wiltshire. As Wiltshire looks at strike two, count evens up two and two. And he does make a big difference in basketball games, no oh, question. Oh, absolutely. The, it, I mean, that's one of the things that, that honestly I feel like is one of the most underrated as uh, when it comes to sporting events is is those guys man they can they just have a way about them God. there's another fly ball into center off of wiltshire going back going back hawthorne at the track makes the grab and it's back to back fly outs and there's two down but, but like i was saying those guys man they just they can really get a crowd involved. <laughs> So we go back to the top of the order with Dylan Bradford. <laughs> Our buddy Matt Adair is actually, yeah, he's listening to us, so. <laughs> well, see, he's got time. He's well, got but, plenty of time. Well, I mean, I think he's actually in New York or, or, or is it California this <laughs> yeah. week? Bristol, yeah, yeah, campus, yeah, ESPN yeah, campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, he's, he's there, you know. Always pinch hitting somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Count his own one to Bradford. Forever a wingman. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a, there's a big, uh, what was it? it was, I think it's an eight and under game that he's calling this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know he's happy. He'll be happy when we move on. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Count his 2 to Dylan Bradford again. Two down here in the bottom of the third. Bradford again, one for one today. He was hit by a pitch back in the first single that scored a run in the second as that pitch outside for a one and two count. Well, I'm in no hurry to go home, so we need to get, a, get things going here with two outs. One, two pitch to Bradford is inside and off the plate. Count even's up two and two now. And Ruben Macias, the new pitcher on with the starter, Charles Peacock. I think uh, this blue zone is a little bit more predictable than the first game one. It definitely seems like he's he's a little bit wider. 2-2, two -two, ground ball hit to second, fielded by Cripps, flips to first, and that'll do it for the Rangers. 
here in the third, but they do get three more runs on three hits with no errors and nobody left on. We move to the fourth. Rangers lead it 10 to four on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network 105.7. Holder Drug has been serving the community of Alva since 1952. When you are in need of medication, healthcare items, and more, look to none other than Holder Drug, Alva's local pharmacy. Holder Drug is locally and family owned and is always ready to serve you. They offer convenient drive through pickup as well as free delivery with your medication. They also offer a number of gift ideas for those special holidays. For more information, visit their website, www.holderdrug.com, or stop by 513 Barnes Avenue in downtown Alva. Community Bank has been serving Alva, Oklahoma, and the surrounding area since 1984. Community Bank was founded by local community members who wanted to ensure the banking needs of the community were being met. It has been our goal since inception to provide customer-focused services and community development. Our customers are friends, neighbors, and never just a number. We believe in investing in our community, and we pride ourselves in being your hometown bank. Community Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Do you need assistance taking care of yourself or loved ones? Beatles Nursing Home in Alva is here for you. We offer safe, high-quality, affordable nursing care while meeting all care guidelines for living. Call us at 580-327-1274 to learn more about our admissions process to place your loved one in our care. When it's time to choose a nursing home facility, we'll hope you'll consider Beatles Nursing Home located at 916 Noble Street in Alva. The catcher, number 30, Noah Estrom, will lead things off for the Weevils as we welcome you back to Meyer Stadium. That's to go to alongside Steve Barrows and Matt Stratton here. This evening, it's a 1-0 count on the first pitch for Fuller. After Estrom, will go back to the top of the order with Hawthorne and Camden Tanner. one from Fuller. Right across the plate for a called strike. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. Estrom 0 for 1 today. Flew out to right last time up. That was back in the second inning. One one is in there for a called strike. Count one and two. One always makes it nice easier when you guys have events like this and the weather turns out to be nice, right? Yeah, right. Um, we were we were actually mildly concerned that the uh, that the wind was going to be blowing 20, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> Instead, it's actually only blowing about ten or fifteen. So, um. I don't know what the weather's supposed to be like tomorrow. I'm sure it's still going to be. From, from the last that I checked, I think it's going to be pretty windy again tomorrow. So that's uh, it may make for, a, for an interesting uh, rubber match if uh, Northwestern is able to hang on and, uh, and get the W here. Well, the count goes full three and two to Noah Estrom. Fuller back out there again to start the fourth. We do have action in the Ranger bullpen. Three, two pitch, tried the corner and missed for ball four. And it's a leadoff walk for Estrom. Well, the Weevils have a base runner as we go back to the top of the order with Rock Hawthorne, the center fielder who's had a really good day at the plate so far. Doubled and scored a run in the first, singled and scored a run in the second. He's four for eight in the series. Those, those leadoff walks, man, those will, uh, those are those are always frustrating. <laughs> a lot of times they lead to runs and now the Weevils have been able to do that when they've got the leadoff runner on. And Coach Bowen is going to come out. And I think we may see a pitching change here for the Rangers, or at least we know this mound visit. It's brought to you by G&G &G Home Furnishings. Let's, let's take a 30-second break and come back. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Here at Bank Central, we like to shoot for three, and that includes our services to you. From fee-free checking accounts to competitive CD rates and all the way to consumer lending, stop by any of our locations in Alva, Enid, Woodward, and Cherokee, or call 580-327-1122 to talk with one of our qualified professionals. Bank Central, where we're centered on you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Certain fees and restrictions may apply. Welcome back here to Meyer Stadium. Welcome back to the broadcast. Get Rangers on top 10 to four on the Community Bank School Board as Rangers again with two relievers up in the bullpen as Coach Bowen has come out. Having a word with his pitcher right now again, Jacob Fuller got the start today. It will be Rock Hawthorne, the hitter. 
not sure what they're maybe just be giving the his relievers I, a little bit more time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that that's that's exactly what he's trying to do is 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 get that pitcher another two or three pitches out there in the bullpen. And that's exactly what it did. The Rangers will make a pitching change. So let's uh, take another break. As this call, the bullpen will be brought to you by Ignite Physical Therapy. We'll come back to Byer Stadium right after this. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. You put in the work, and every day you go out and prove it again. You're an expert in your field. That's what farmers do every day. They go out and get the job done. If that's you, then Farm Credit of Western Oklahoma wants to thank you. For a livestock or crop loan, equipment loan, ag real estate, or operating loan, we will tailor a loan to your need. Talk to one of our ag specialists by phone or stop by a branch today. Farm Credit of Western Oklahoma and Equal Housing Opportunity Lender, online at farmcreditloans.com. Get no better deal in the country than at Croft Country, located in Alva, Oklahoma. Croft Country is the dealer for vehicles in Northwest Oklahoma. Croft Country is locally owned and operated since 1985, offering a full line of award-winning brands including Chevy and GMC. From the time you enter our showroom for sales or service, you can expect to be treated like family. So the next time you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, come see us right here in Alva, located at 401 East Oklahoma Boulevard. Anger, anxiety, worry, and disbelief. These are normal emotions to feel with an unplanned pregnancy. You have options, and you are not alone. Hope Pregnancy Center in Alva is a safe, confidential, and compassionate place to land. Hope offers free pregnancy testing and ultrasound, and you will be provided education for all your options. Remember, you aren't alone. We can help with hope. Visit thinkunpregnant.org. That's thinkunpregnant.org. Well, the new pitcher on for the Rangers will be the 6'4 left-handed junior, number 47, Kyle Gescheidel, who pitched in game one. Gescheidel went a third of an inning in game one, gave up one hit, one run, one earn, and faced two batters. And again, he will come in to pitch here in, in game number two as he relieves Jacob Fuller for Northwestern. So, but again, it will be will be two left-handed hitters, so maybe a situational move here by Coach Bowen. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you always uh, you always want to bring the guy in that uh, that curveball is going to be breaking away to uh, or breaking uh, away from rather than breaking into. So, uh, so yeah, I mean that uh, just as soon as, uh, as as this guy left the bullpen, they they got um, this other guy down there warming up, and uh, um, I'd, I'd be willing to bet that. Uh, if he makes it makes it through these two batters, we may see another pitching change. But I think that is Justin Dunlap, and I'm not entirely sure out there warming up for the Rangers in the pen, but it will be Kyle Gescheidel who will pitch to Rock Hawthorne again, a runner on first after the leadoff walk by Estrom. Again, we're here in the top of the fourth, Rangers leading it 10 to four on the Community Bank scoreboard. Unless we get a quick double play here, in which case then he may he may give him a little bit more longevity there. So, as Gishidel checks the runner, now comes home. That one low and away. Nice stop by Vital by an home plate. Count will be a one and zero. Oh. Of course, Rangers back in action tomorrow will be Senior Day. The Senior Day festivities taking place at eleven thirty. First pitch scheduled for noon and. Rangers will not be back at home for a while. Just a midweek game left at home against Rogers State. No more weekend series after this. And the 1 0. Up and away for ball two. It's kind of wild to think about that, that we're on the road the next two weekends and may not be back here unless we get to a point where we're hosting in the conference by the GAC tournament. Yeah, it, it, it definitely doesn't happen very often where that's the case, especially, uh, especially you know, late in the season. You always try to kind of finish with a home stand. But, uh, um, you know, with, uh, with the conference that we've got right now and, and uh, you know, a lot of these schools being uh, uh, a decent car ride away, I mean, that's uh, – yeah. You're, you're, you're bound to have uh, those seasons where you're going to finish this finish up the regular season, at least on a road trip. Yeah, Rangers next road trip headed to Southern Arkansas next week in Magnolia and then finishing up in Weatherford to take on rival Southwestern. 3-0 pitch. That's in there from Gescheidel for a cold strike to Hawthorne. Count is 3-1 now. I will say that's actually one thing that I was uh, – that. 
I, I feel like I was pretty fortunate as the, uh, the longest road trip we seemed to take was either to uh, Lubbock Christian or, uh, or, or Wayland Baptist there in, in Plainview. So uh, there's oh. a chopper hit to first, Bradford to second for one, and that throw was wide, got away from Wiltshire. Runners gonna move to advance to second and third after the air. As Estrom to third and Hawthorne to second. Oh, and that's tough there because now you got two runners in scoring position and Coach Bowen's going to come back out and I think we may see a pitching change. Or not. Or he may just be coming out to have a word with the umpire. Yeah, that, and that one, that one seemed pretty close. That, I think he may be arguing that maybe he lost that one on the transfer because he, he, he sure whipped around pretty quick on that one. So Coach Bowen having a word with the umpire in the field over there down the third base line and got the explanation. Now the umpire in the field will come out and have a word with the home plate umpire and they're going to discuss this. So we'll kind of just have to wait and see here what the uh, call is going to be. Again, as it stands right now, Hawthorne at second, Estrom at third. Again, there's nobody out and they did just rule the runner safe. Yeah, I think that... Uh I think that ended up, uh, I think that may be what Coach Bowen was arguing there and said that maybe he had control of it and then and lost it on the transfer because it sure seemed like he, he, he whipped around pretty quickly trying to get rid of it to, to head back to first base. So Hawthorne reaches on the air. So nobody out as Camden Tanner, the left-handed hitter, will bat as Gescheidel checks the runner at second, now comes home. Line shot to the right, through for a base hit into right. One run will come in to score as Hawthorne rounds third. He's headed for home, and UAM inches closer. It's now 10 to 6 after Tanner drives in two. So coming in to score is Estrom from third, from second is Hawthorne. And Tanner on first is now will be Cade Kinsia. As it looks like now, Coach Bowen's going to come back out, and I think we're going to see a pitching change for the Rangers. This call of the bullpen brought to you by Ignite Physical Therapy. As again, it's 10 to 6. Nobody out with a runner on force first for the Weevils as we're here in the top of the fourth inning. We'll come back to Meyer Stadium right after this. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network 105.7. To prevent medication from getting into the wrong hands, it is crucial to store it out of sight and out of the reach of children and visitors. In addition, it is important to dispose of unwanted, expired, and unused medications in a safe manner. For more information, visit okimready.org. That's okimready.org, or call 988 Oklahoma's Mental Health Lifeline. This program is funded by Northwestern Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Prevention Services, and Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. When was the last time you evaluated your investment goals? With our ever-changing environment, it's time. Talk to us about locking in a high, long-term fixed interest rate and put your money to work for you. I'm Whitney Gum, and here at e j Financial, we work with you to implement a custom plan to fit your financial goals. Call our office today at 580-327-2552 to book a complimentary financial review. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, member FINRA, SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Cambridge and E&J Financial are not affiliated. KNS Tire and Alva has been locally owned and operated since 2004. While every business claims to be the best, KNS Tire is the best. Our satisfied customers speak for themselves by coming back to us each and every time. Our amazing services go beyond a regular tune-up or tire rotation. Our team is well-trained and able to take care of all your car care needs, including preventative maintenance, wheel alignments, brakes, and more. Visit knstire.com for more information or come see us at 2590 College Boulevard right here in Alva. The Tacoma Farmers Co-op is a proud supporter of Ranger and Goldbug activities since 1916. They have been here to serve you with all your farming and ranching needs with a wide range of goods and services from fuel, hardware, fencing, tires, feed and seed, plus fertilizer. They're here to meet your needs. Choose to trade with a co-op that gives its profits back to you. To learn about the Tacoma Co-op Advantage, stop by one of five locations in Moreland, Freedom, Winoka, Jet, and Tacoma, or visit them at tacomacoop.com and get a better service at a better place. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium. New pitcher out for the Rangers. Will be the six-foot-four right-handed sophomore out of Tuttle, Oklahoma, number 18, Will Cates. 
Gates enters with a 2.96 earned run average. He is 3-0. This will be his 10th appearance of the year. He has made it two, two starts, 24 to third, 26 hits, eight runs, all those earned. 11 walks to 14 strikeouts. Teams are hitting 274 against Will Cates so far this season. As Will Cates will pitch to Kate Katsia. His first pitch from Cates, and he hits the batter, and it'll be runners at first and second now for the Weevils. Well, so UAM has gotten closer. They've scored two here in the fourth. Again, nobody out as the dangerous Chad Poppy will step into the batter's box. He is 0 for 2 today, though. Infield fly rule in effect. Uh, Case's granddad is down in the dugout club, I was just told. First time he's ever been here. Oh, that's awesome. And you get to see Will come out and pitch today. Of course, last time you and I, we saw him pitch last weekend. Had a great start against East Central. Yep. Gallon is 0-1 to Chaz Poppy. That's a fly ball ripped into left. Back goes right to the wall, and it is gone. Three-run home run off the bat of Chaz Poppy. And just like that, Southern Arkansas has gotten to within a run. It's now 10 to nine. Yeah, it can be tough being a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> and we knew this had a, this one was going to be a long game today. Yeah, the, way the ball has been flying out of here. Second home run hit by the Weevils. Gates goes quickly to Cripps. That's that's a big pitch right there. I mean, you give up a home run like that, and you come right back with a fastball for a strike. I mean, that's just uh, that's just a signal that he's dialed in, and especially with that pitch right there, that that curveball for strike two. Man, that's those are those are very very big underrated pitches right there. O two, that one bounces in front of the plate. Count moves to one and two now to Chase Cripps, who's zero for one today. Flew out to right last time up. He also walked in the first. Well, as a pitcher, you got to have an edge anyway. I mean, it's you got to have a short memory, but you can also uh, turn it up a notch and get a little bit angry that and come back and and settle in. No, and and especially on a day like today, whenever you know the wind's blowing out ten or fifteen miles an hour, and 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 you give up a home run that that you know otherwise would be a long fly ball. I mean that. There's there there's not much other as far as the pitcher goes. Whenever you give up an or whenever you give up a home run that should be, you know, on any other given day, it's going to be an out. Yeah, man, that'll that's a, that's enough to get you fired up right there. Two two pitch is fouled off by Cripps, and I think right off his looks like his left ankle maybe. He went down. He jumps back up off the turf, and he appears to be okay. As he just kind of just waved off the coach at third and said, "I'm good." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that you like that in your in a player. Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. In 2-2 count to Cripps, nobody out. Weevils have scored five here in the fourth. Rangers led it 10 to four at the beginning of this inning. They now lead it 10 to nine. 2-2 two -two from Cates. Chopper to short. Wiltshire charges, throws to first. In time it is for the 6-3 put out. Nice play there, nice stretch from Bradford at first, and there's one down. Yeah, good dig. So now batting the left fielder, number 19, Kirk Wolf. So for one today. Lined out to third in the first. He also walked in his second at bat in the third. Well, if I mentioned, I saw Chris Glass here earlier, Doug with it. Uh, son Danny and Deb were here a little bit ago. Doug was actually up there just a little bit ago, too. Yeah, he still is, yeah. No. No. Here's another thing to ask you, Steve, is the, uh, the armband, Colin Vitches, what do you, how do you, how you feel about that one? <laughs> Here's the 0-1. Inside evens up one and one. Well, in the military, we had an SOI, <laughs> signal operating instructions, and it changed daily. 1-1 um, one, one pitch outside for ball I, two. I go back to even when I coached Legion and before, and it doesn't matter the level, I don't like anybody calling the pitches except for the catcher. And if the pitcher doesn't like it, he shakes it. I just, to me, the battery, 
should be the battery. But I know that's been gone a long time now. No, and 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 honestly, uh, I mean, like two, we two talked pitches, about, is, three. is uh, you know back and and again, I hate using the term my day, but back in my day, is is that the catchers absolutely called the pitches. That being said. I don't know that I ever shook my catcher off because of that whole uh, that whole Bull Durham situation <laughs> of uh, of telling them yeah. uh, of the catcher telling uh, telling them what pitch is coming. Um, that that uh, that that just <laughs> we just go on, serve it up. Yeah, yeah. No, our our catcher was he he was just squirrely enough that uh, that I feel like he, he he may have tried to pull something like that off had I ever. <laughs> have I ever been gutsy enough to shake him off? So, three-two pitch. That's a line shot at the left for a base hit. One out single for Wolf. His first hit of the game, and the tying run now is aboard at first. Well, the exception to that, Matt, would be if you're on the hill. Of course, your catcher would know or should know if when you know one of your selections or pitch, whatever you had. Yeah. I had four different pitches. If I didn't feel good with it and I got the signal for it. Uh, I, I might shake it off in that case. And I would want my catcher to respect that. I mean, no, and and, and definitely, and, and and obviously, it's a it's a little bit different. Um, you know, for guys coming out of the bullpen, um, obviously, again, like I said, I mean, I, uh, you know, with being being a starting pitcher for years, uh, you know, we always had our starting catcher down there in the bullpen catching us, so he always knew, you know, on any given day what was going to be working, what was what wasn't, and um, he was very good at. Uh, there's a fly ball into right. This one going back off the bat of Garrick, and it's over the wall for a home run. Another home run in the game for Aiden Garrett, or at least the series anyway. This is a two-run shot, and Arkansas Monticello has taken the lead for the first time today, 11 to 10. Well, so Northwestern puts up their seventh spot in the second. UAM has done the same thing here in the fourth. They've picked up seven runs so far. As Brody Romero will bat. So Garrett has hit four home runs in the first two games of this series. Poppy has three. Whew. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to answer with our sticks. I mean. Here's the 1-0. Skates delivers low for ball one. Romero for two today. Count is 2 and 0. 2 0 from Cates. Breaking ball is in there for a called strike. Count moves to 2 and 1. That's now eight home runs hit by Arkansas Monticello. Rangers have hit six of their own. 2 1. That one fouled off the bat of Romero. Count evens up two balls, two strikes now. And again, on deck is Estrom, who led the inning off. But that kind of goes back old school, old school, in that. Grounder hit foul to the left. Hit himself again. Uh, you know, growing up, season ticket holder of the football Cardinals. I mean, you know, Charlie Johnson, uh, Jim Hart, I mean, Staubach, those guys, they all ca called their own plays. Sure. 2-2 mm -hmm. pitch. I just like it in the hands of the players. Wiltshire Fields throws to first, just got him in time for the 6-3 put out. And there's two down in the fourth as Estrom now will bat for the second time in this half inning. That's not to say that I, you know, don't appreciate coaching and managers and I've been both, but I just, the more it's the no, player's no, game, the more no, I like it. No, and, and again, I mean, and you and I have argued this honestly till we're, we're both blue in the face and, uh, that's one of those things, I mean, that, uh, you know, I mean, w w with uh, some of the technology and the, the scouting reports and all that kind of stuff that... Uh, Estrom with a single into left. It's a two-out single. Did you ever notice how he interrupts us? Yeah, I right. mean, we're, we're I mean, we've got the tough job here. Yeah, we're trying to have a conversation <laughs> here, just, and he just... <laughs> I'm just doing my job. I, you? Know, <laughs> I know. He makes it look so easy. No, <laughs> Honestly, yes, he does. Yes, because he's he's putting up with honestly the both of us, so we we I feel like we've kind of hijacked the broadcast a little bit. <laughs> First pitch to Hawthorne is ball one. He's reached base safely in every at bat. He is two for three today. Reached on an error last time up in the fourth. 
1 0 to Hawthorne. Breaking ball miss. Count moves to 2 0. First hit of the day from Estrom, that single. Is Rangers now have some work to do when they come back in the bottom of the fourth. You know, I've always thought that as, as a right handed pitcher, throwing a breaking ball to a left handed hitter, I think that's one of the toughest pitches in baseball to throw because you really don't have a frame of reference. You're just kind of throwing it out there, hoping that it breaks enough to get back across the strike zone. Gates with the 2-1. Hawthorne lays off. The count goes to 3-1 and one now. As we see action in the Ranger bullpen. Also action for the Weevils in their pen as well. This is where I quite often would get the hitters with my screwball, left-handed hitters. That's a fly ball lifted into left. This should be the final out, and it is. As it's caught by right, that'll do it for the Weevils here in the fourth as they do pick up seven more runs on four hits with one error and one left on. Bottom of the fourth we go. Rangers trailing it now 11 to 10 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Naloxone is a medication designed to rapidly reverse opioid overdose. A person who is experiencing an overdose can't administer naloxone to themselves. Anyone can carry naloxone, give it to someone experiencing an overdose, and potentially save a life. That's why everyone should consider having naloxone. For more information, visit okimready.org. That's okimready.org. This program is funded by Northwestern Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Prevention Services, and Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. 818 Diner has consistently provided the city of Alba with quality comfort food and great service since opening in 2019. Join us for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Some of our popular menu items to choose from include the BCB Burger, the French Dip, and our staples such as Terry's Chicken Fried Steak, Don's Hamburger Steak, and Joe's Chicken Tenders. Open Monday and Wednesday through Sunday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and open for dinner Wednesday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you want a variety of menu items and friendly service to give you that local diner feeling, visit 818 Diner right here in Alba. Dean Gall Real Estate and Auction has been serving clients in Oklahoma and Kansas for nearly 37 years. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, we are your real estate professionals. We will get you the top dollar for your property, whether it be at auction or private sale. Get with Dean Gall Real Estate and Auction if you're wanting to buy a ranch, good farmland, sell or lease minerals, or buy a home. Visit our website at deangallauction.com to browse available listings. Talk to Dean, Steve, or Todd at 580-327-8217 or stop by the office in Alva where you're always greeted with a smile. Come and see us. Welcome back out of our commercial break. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Weevil's now on top, 11 to 10, after putting up seven at the top of the fourth. It'll be left fielder number 31, Carson Wright, due up for the Rangers, followed by Paul Sachin and Chad Green as the Rangers look to reclaim their lead. They once led 10 to four going into the fourth here. That's again, uh, both teams. Rangers have 10 runs on eight hits. Weevils with 11 runs on 10 hits. Rangers have committed one error so far. Rangers have not left anybody on, which is a good sign. Weevils have left five. That's a plus. Carson Wright 0 for 1 today. Hit into a 6-4-3 double play in the first. Walked and scored a run in the second. You know, Steve, I was going to ask you, and this is something I was going to ask right before we took the, the break there at the half inning, but uh, you were talking about, you know, throwing a screwball back back in the day, and just exactly how old are you? Oh, please. Because <laughs> screwballs, man, those things haven't been around for a <laughs> while now. I started pitching in the roaring 20s. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the 60s and the 70s. He, he, he pitched back in the true dead ball era. <laughs> we did have a new pitcher come in to start this inning for the Weevils. It's the six-foot right-handed senior out of Roxy, Mississippi. We saw in game one, Jacob McDaniel. He actually got the win, went two innings, one run, one earn, one walk, and one strikeout, and he faced seven batters. As the 1-1 is in there for a called strike. Count moves to 1-2 and two now. I guess I can't give you too hard of a time, you know, with you being a <laughs> ra Ranger royalty, Hall of Famer and all, so. Oh, gosh. Well, I was thinking, as I was getting my, coming back from my jacket, Joe Phelps would have been proud because uh, Frosty Joe's was here. <laughs> I did see that, handing out snow cones along with the, the hot dogs and brats. Man, that's. 
I don't know who bought it from him. I just remember, you know, that was uh, that was the thing that Joe was really great with in Tanya. 2-2 mm -hmm. pitch upcoming. McDaniel delivers. Right fouls this one off to the right. Goes off the net. Count will stay at 2-2. Two and two. Again, we're here in the bottom of the fourth. What was it? Game one, we had a fly ball to right, and Andrew thought what was going on. Remember that? Fly, yeah, that's right. Fly I said ball right. to right. 2-2 yeah. <laughs> two -two pitch. And that one, with check swing, just got a piece did right. Yeah. And that's Sidearm guys are tough, man. That That's uh, especially you? if you're not looking at it, you know, fairly regularly, that that, that sidearm delivery, it's, and that's, it's just tough to see. Did you drop that low? I, I actually I did my my senior year uh, I uh, I started having quite a few arm problems and two two this one's ripped into center for a base hit Carson Wright leadoff single I uh, I started having some you know some arm problems and it was taking me you know eight nine days of recovery and so uh, they uh, our pitching coach came to me uh, probably about a month before season and he said hey uh, why don't why don't you try and drop down throwing sidearm let's see what that does for you and so. Uh, and so I did, and, and uh, it actually it ended up working very well. It solved a lot of my arm problems and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, like I said, I mean, it, it's definitely uh, it's definitely tough to, to adjust to as a hitter. Not that I would know because I never hit, but uh, <laughs> but but uh, I, you see a lot of those those sidearm guys having a lot of success. Boy, that was a quick visit to the mound as maybe that's pitching coach came out. And we come hustling out of that dugout. Let's well, mound visit brought to you by G and G Home Furnishings again. Paul Sage and the hitter facing a 1-0 count with a runner on first is Carson Wright. No, nah, it wouldn't be because, listen, the Bull Grill closes at nine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He, he just went out there and said, "Son, we're gonna have to speed this one up. We've got dinner plans here in a little yeah. bit." This guy's supposed to have a meal ready for us. <laughs> And sometimes that's uh, that's what you bring is levity to the mound, you know, give a, just a break. Yeah, uh, he, he honestly he probably went out there and told him a dad joke, <laughs> loosen him up a little bit. <laughs> One zero to Sachin, and it's outside and off the plate. Count moves to two and zero. Sachin again struck out back in the first, had the grand slam in the second. Don't give the Rangers a lead. Nobody down. Let's. Let's make something happen this inning. 2-0 to Sachin. And he'll look at ball three. Count moves to 3-0 now. That was awfully close. The umpire's going to want a little bit lower for that to, for him to give it. And we definitely need to at least come back and tie it right here. I think that'd be enough to kind of swing the momentum back in our favor. Well, it's ball four to Sachin on four straight pitches. Runners now going to be at first and second for the Rangers. As yeah. Chad Green will bat. My thinking too is that this pitcher took the win in Game One, so let's uh, you know let's rough him up. Let's chase him from this game. There is they do continue to have action in the bullpen for Arkansas Monticello. Nobody up for the Rangers currently. What are the profile stats on this kid? Is he six five, six four, at the plate? Uh -huh. Yeah, Green. Yeah, Chad goes at six three. Big kid. Count is 0-1 to Green, who's it's got it out to third last time up and then struck out in the second. It's coming from one big kid to another. <laughs> or as Mike Shannon would say, just a biscuit shy of 250. <laughs> <laughs> Count evens up 1-1 to Chad Green. One one pitch. Ooh. Green looks at strike two, and count will move to one and two now. <laughs> McDaniel checks the runner at second. Now comes home as Green is off the end of the bat right to second. That'll work. As there's the 4-3 put out of Green, but the runner's able to move up on the ground ball to second as right goes to third, Sachin to second. Tying run 90 feet away, the leading run at second as Hagen Barcella will bat. And 
Marcelo two for two today. Solo home run in the second. Of course, single last time up in the third and also scored a run. I think that's what you call a no run hit and run. Yeah. First pitch to Marcelo up and away for ball one as the count moves to one and oh now. He's got to be careful here. He's got to open base at first. And uh, if he hangs that breaking ball or comes inside with that fastball. There's the 1 0. Got under it. Fly ball lifted into deep left. Going back is Wolf near the track. And that one is over the wall for a home run. A three run <laughs> shot by Hagen Barcelo. <laughs> and just like that, the Rangers reclaim the lead now 13 to 11. Well, he came inside for the pass ball <laughs> and said bye bye. So, Barcelo with his second home run of the game. Rangers jump back out on top, still just one out here in the bottom of the fourth. And I think we're going to see a pitching change after that three run bomb that McDaniel just gave up as head coach will come out. This mound visit brought to you by GG Home Furnishings. The pitching change brought to you by. Night physical therapy with our call the bullpen. We'll come back after this. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network. Spring is here and so are the savings at GG Home Furnishings in Alva. Right now it's our annual anniversary sale happening through the month of April. Mattresses starting at $299, Lazy Boy Recliners at $499, sofas at $399, dining room sets at $599, and bedroom sets starting at just $329. Don't miss out on all the savings throughout the month of April, so stop in and browse during our anniversary sale happening at G&G Home Furnishings, located at 2107 College Boulevard, right here in Alba. Looking for the best in lawn care? Peak Environment has you covered. We offer a wide range of services, including full-service mowing, weed control, Christmas light installation, and more. Peak Environment provides efficient and affordable services across northwest Oklahoma with branches in Alva, Enid, and Woodward. Call our office today at 580-748-8003 for a free quote on any service. That's Peak Environment, 748-8003. Proud supporter of all Ranger and Goldbug Athletics. The Alva Moose Lodge is a proud supporter of all Northwestern and Alva public school activities and strives to be the heart of the community through fundraisers and community-based events that make a difference in the lives of individuals, kids, and families throughout Northwest Oklahoma. On a national basis, the Moose Fraternity provides at-risk children with a second chance at life and its senior members a comforting retirement at its five-star senior facility in Florida. If you would like to see how you can help make a difference in the lives of those in need, stop by the Alva Moose Lodge Monday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. at 3027th Street to learn more. Well, new pitcher out for the Weevils here in the bottom of the fourth with just one out. New pitcher for Arkansas Monticello, the 5'10 junior out of Glendale, Arizona, number, actually, my apologies, the 6'3 junior out of Brampton, Ontario, Canada. A transfer out of Connor State Community College out of Warner, Oklahoma. It'll be number 33, Nelson Mercado. Numbers on Mercado this season, a 3.91 earned run, earn run average. He's two and three, 15th appearance. He does have five saves this season. 23 innings, 15 hits, 11 runs, 10 earned. 11 walks, 29 strikeouts. Teams are hitting just 181 against him this season. Now Watching him warm up there, man. This kid, he goes hard. <laughs> That's uh, two Canadians they've had on the hill today. So Trevor Sayre will face Mercado as he delivers upstairs for ball one. Sayre, single score to run in the second, two-run home run in the third. I do think that we need to take a second to uh, recognize uh, Marcelo's uh, mullet. That he, that he had rocking there right as he as he crossed home plate. I well, missed that. Yeah, man, that, that thing looked pretty good. Oh, Parcello? Yeah, Par yeah. Parcello, pardon me. Counts one and one to Sayre. Mercado with the delivery. He caught the outside corner. Count moves to one and two now to Trevor Sayre. Well, Jesse, the barrister Klein is listening. Contributed uh, some Bull Durham I saw that. information. Hope he might make it out. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on and missed as Sayre chased that one upstairs, and there's one down. Came inside on him, yeah. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth as Colby Grace now will bat. Walked and scored a run in the second. Solo home run in the third. 
as the Grand Rangers again lead it 13 to 11. Seven in the second, three in the third, and three more here in the fourth. I wonder if Jeff has this on. Anyway, Jeff, if you're listening or watching, hey. That's Canadian. We, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jose. Hey, hey, Jose. Got a salsa order for him next time y'all see him, just in case. Yeah, I got to get some myself as that pitch misses upstairs. Count moves to 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes to Colby Grace. Kind of triggered the taste buds there, did I? Yeah, I honestly, I think that, that Alva State's putting on a salsa walk. Um, I saw that uh, just uh, Alva State Bank, they're sponsoring a salsa walk um, down on the square or, and across some of the, the local restaurants. I think that's coming here in the next couple of weeks. And, is that where uh, you have to walk a 5K with a pint of salsa? It, it actually is not. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, that definitely would make it more interesting. But, uh, but no, I think uh, they're, they're bringing in some, uh, some food trucks and vendors and, like I said, hitting the, the local restaurants and that kind of stuff uh, for uh, a salsa walk. 2-2 two, two pitch oh, oh, upcoming I, to Grace. Upstairs for ball three. I was thinking about a dance. <laughs> what we used to do, I mean, no, I mean. Again. The conga line. Hey, hey, again, how old are you, Steve? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you guys don't know conga fun, I guess. <laughs> three. Yeah, that wasn't on the uh, nightlight playlist. 3-2 <laughs> pitch is swung on and missed for strike three, and that'll do it for the Rangers in the fourth. However, Northwestern <laughs> does pick up. Three more runs on two hits, no errors with nobody left on. We move into the fifth. Rangers leading at 13 to 11 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Keeping your car clean is an inexpensive way to protect its value. Shirley Shine Car Wash, located west of Love, offers a six-bay self-serve car wash, including three truck bays. Your wash options include soap, tire cleaner, foamy brush, wax, spot-free rinse, and air chamois. And you can pay with credit, debit card, or quarter. Don't just clean the outside, clean the inside with its self-serve car vacuum. You can also clean your pet with their self-serve dog walk. Company vehicle? Be sure to ask about our fleet account. So the next time your vehicle needs rinse or detailed, come by Shirley Shine Car Wash, located right here in Alva. At Ignite Physical Therapy, we assist in the therapy of many different aspects, such as advanced problem solving, joint mobilization, treatment of adverse neural tension, evaluation and treatment of muscle imbalance, tissue-specific exercise, and patient education. Dr. Jared Hayda and staff want to get you back to the life that you had before your injury. They have helped so many for rehabilitation, and they can do the same for you. Stop by and see the staff at Ignite Physical Therapy on 521 Street or make an appointment by calling 580-327-3331. We know how much love your pet gives you. We're Ridgeview Veterinary Hospital. We're always here for you and your pet. Ridgeview Vet Hospital provides the most comprehensive care from regular checkups to emergency. Ridgeview Vet Hospital proudly provides veterinary services to all animals, large or small. Visit us today to let Dr. Lohman and his staff take care of your extended family located right here in Alva or call us to schedule your appointment at 580-327-0201. Ridgeview Vet Hospital is a proud supporter of Alva and Northwestern activities. Rangers will go to the bullpen as we open up play here in the top of the fifth. And Northwestern will go to Jacob Shaw. Shaw, of course, pitched. In game one of the doubleheader, gave up two hits, two runs, both of those earned, and two batters faced as he delivers a cold strike there to open up play here in the fifth. To Camden Tanner for strike one, count his own one. Hill one to Tanner, swung on and missed, count his 0 and two. <laughs> oh, Hagen's mom's down in Houston, scaring the dogs, yelling for Hagen's 53rd <laughs> collegiate home run. That pitch swung on and missed for a strike three on three straight pitches. And Jacob Shaw, much better start to this than we had in game one. That's a big out right there. Yep. Well, Jay, dad's here. And she said he's going between the, the stands and the dugout club, <laughs> having a good old time. I did see him in the, in the food tent a couple times. <laughs> food tent, too? No, it's a great day out here. Shaw just missed there. Can't move the 1-0 to Kinsia, who's... Well, 0 for 2 today. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run last time in the fourth. 1-0. That one chopped foul to the left. County evens up one ball, one strike. Jazz Poppy on deck. We'd like to have nobody on when he comes to the plate. 
One ball, one strike. Cade can see it. In the delivery. Into the turf for ball two. Count moves to 2-0 and oh now. Or 2-1. and one. Yeah, let's not go three. Of course, back here tomorrow. Our senior day festivities, which we will carry on the radio. And, of course, the Ranger Athletics YouTube channel beginning at 11.30 tomorrow, or tomorrow morning. First pitch at noon. That's a shot down the third base side. Gets by Grace down the left field line. You can see he's going to round first. He's headed for second. Here's the throw in from right. Cut off by Wiltshire at short. And it's a double for Kinsia to start. Easy to say, but uh, Maddie's seen it a lot too. That is a tough position to play when those things come off the bat that hard. Yeah, especially uh, you, you're, you're right at that point of, of daylight yep. compared to uh, the, you know, the stadium lights. And it just, uh, this, is, this is honestly, there's about a 10 or 15 minute window when it's, it's tough for the guys on the corner. Uh, uh, seeing the ball come off the bat. Upstairs to Chaz Poppy for ball one. Count is 1-0 and to Poppy. Shaw checks the runner, now comes home. Upstairs for ball two. Poppy again, last time up, had that three-run home run. It's his third in the series. He is one for three today with three RBIs. Matt's current head coach just came by and was giving signs. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's the uh, universal signal for it's about time for me to go home and <laughs> be on dad duty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two balls, one strike to Poppy. And she didn't break eye contact. No, 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 absolutely. A and that's... seeing through this glass was not easy. She found your BB eyes. And... Oh, that's crushed by Poppy into center. Back goes Sayre, and he'll make the grab. Runner will tag up and head for third, as can see, is safe at third. And there's two down, though, after the grab from Sayre. Well, anytime you can keep have him keep it in the park, that, yeah, oh, no doubt. that's a victory there. That sounded a lot Yeah, I further. thought I thought it was going to fly. Yeah, especially with, uh, you know, first base open right there and, and how well he's done. I'm well, surprised. the one thing I'm, is, you look out in center, that wind has really calmed down. No, absolutely, yeah. So, and especially, too, like, like we were just talking, you know, about that 10 or 15 minute window, that window right now, that's uh, that's one of the things uh, with the, the temperature change and everything. And so uh, that ball is definitely not going to be flying as well as it has been. For the well, last there, there was a grounder hit by Cripps to Wiltshire, who went to first in time for the 6-3 put out. And the Rangers keep Katsia at third base and the Weevils, more importantly, scoreless here in the fifth. No runs on one hit, no errors with one left on. Bottom of the fifth we go. Rangers leading at 13 to 11 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Your agency of choice for all types of insurance is McDermott Insurance in Alva. For home, auto, farm, or business insurance, the McDermott Agency will protect what you value most by providing the best coverage and client service possible. To get your custom professional insurance review, call McDermott Insurance at 580-327-3500 or visit them at 526 Flynn Street in Alva. McDermott Insurance. They can't predict the future, but they can insure it. Alva Health and Wellness is Alva's newest healthcare option, offering a broad array of services geared to address today's most common illnesses and injuries. Alva Health and Wellness offers services for you and your child, including sickness, wellness, chronic care management, vaccinations, weight loss, and so much more. Find more information online by visiting alvahealthandwellness.com or come by and make an appointment with Jeremy Logston in person at 515 College Avenue right here in Alva. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium. Let's go to alongside Steve Barrows. Appreciate uh, Matt Stratton for joining us here. First, at least uh, nearly five innings of this one. Rangers on top, 13 to 11 is leading things off for the Rangers will be Zach Batal. Rangers with 13 runs on 10 hits. They have committed one error. Monticello with 11 runs on 10 hits. They have not committed an error this afternoon. They have left five runners on though. Rangers have left nobody on. As Vital swings and misses at the first pitch from Mercado, their count moves to 0 1. Yeah. Need a base runner. Here's the 0 1 2 Vital. One outside just off the plate. Count evens up 1 1. Vital 1 for 2 today. Singled score to run in the second. Flew out to right in the third. 
One one pitch. That one hit foul to the right. And I'm going to be honest with you. When that got off the bat, got up in the air, I lost it. <laughs> Absolutely lost that ball. I'm going to lie and say I saw that thing perfectly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm the same. And Maddie's talking about that window of time right now where it's just difficult to pick up the ball. One two pitch. Call strike three to Vitol as he strikes out looking, and there's one down. So now we're at the number nine hitter, the shortstop, number nine, Jacob Wiltshire, who's over two today. Struck out swinging in the second, flew out to center in the third. And both teams have combined to hit eight home runs so far here in game two of the doubleheader. There were seven home runs hit in the first game. As Mercado delivers ball one to Wiltshire. You can hear by the uh, sound of the catcher's mitt when he receives it. Uh, and it looks like it anyway. He throws a heavy ball, this pitcher. Here's the 1-0. Missing low. Testrum trying to frame that one. Count moves to 2-0. Still a really good crowd out here tonight. It's a good game. 2-0 from Mercado. That's a towering fly ball hit high. See Trying ya. to track this one into left, and that is going to be, I believe he caught it in left. He did, Wolf. <laughs> yeah. There's two down. I mean, left fielder, shortstop. Just, yeah, they they didn't see that clearly all the way to the ground. They lost it a couple times up in the air. We put like a blinking light on that thing <laughs> out there right now. Like yeah. a, <laughs> a strobe light. Yeah, honestly, when you saw the shortstop go back, Garrett, he and Wolf, I, I was not sure they were going to make that play, and it looks like Wolf just did make it. Yeah. So now Dylan Bradford will bat with two down. Bradford one, to two to, one for two today with an RBI as he looks at strike one from Mercado. Hit by a pitch in the first, singled, scored a run in the second, grounded out to second in the third. The 0 1 to Bradford. Fly ball lifted out of play. I believe that's going to be somewhere near the parking lot or down that line. Hopefully nobody's vehicle or anybody who's out there. Hopefully they're paying attention a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can see the ball. Don't right look at now. your phone, folks, on a foul ball. Look no. up. 0-2 no. <laughs> pitch. Rip down the first base side. Good play at first by Kinsia. He'll Step on first, and that'll do it. As the Rangers go in order in the bottom of the fifth, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We move into the sixth. Rangers leading at 13 to 11 on the Community Bank scoreboard. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Don't miss the Monster Truck Spring Nationals. One giant show this Saturday, 8 p.m. Crystal Beach Stadium, Woodward, Oklahoma. See the baddest trucks on the planet in ground-pounding, car-crushing action, including Animal House, driven by the world's youngest female driver. She's only 15 years old. She'll take on Dysfunctional, Kicking and Screaming, Redneck Rampage, and Sergeant Smash. Don't miss the Oklahoma Tough Truck Contest, where locals run for cash. Special VIP box seats and pit passes, including 10 to the pre-show pit party with trucks, autographs, and kids meet Batman, plus a superhero souvenir. You can even take a ride in a real monster truck. Tickets available at United Grocery, Napa, Cowboy Tax Shop, Woodward Steel, at the gate, or online at showclix.com. Sponsored by Advanced Real Estate Advisors and Cool Brothers Collision, with Western Electric Co-op, KS Tire, Red Prairie, SPC, Red Dirt Gun and Pawn, and Great Plains Bank. Monster Truck Spring National this Saturday. Woodward, be there. Alba State Bank and Trust Company, older than Oklahoma, big enough to serve you and small enough to know you. We love to give back to our customers. Did you know Alba State Bank offers a great rewards checking account program? That's right. You can earn cash back or high interest with our Casasa accounts. We will even refund you up to $25 in ATM fees. How do I qualify? It's simple. Just swipe your debit card 12 times, sign up for online statements, and have one ACH credit or debit post to your account. Can I do it online? Yes. Just visit our website at www.alvastatebank.com to see if our Casasa Rewards program is right for you. We make banking easy. Whether you're at home, the office, or in your car, our online or mobile banking options help you juggle busy schedules and financial needs. 
We plant roots where others have branches. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. One one count and excuse me, one one pitch upcoming. That's fouled back by Wolf. Count moves to one and two now as we're here in the top of the sixth inning. Rangers leading at 13 to 11. It'll be Wolf followed by Garrett and Romero. Jacob Shaw again out there on the mound for the Rangers. That's lined down the third base side and it's snagged by Colby Grace. That's a good play there in the first out here in the sixth. That was hooking foul, but Grace was uh, kind of not hugging the line, but he was playing that line pretty close to take away a double. And uh, yeah, if he hadn't caught it, it would have gone foul though. So now to the plate, the shortstop, Aiden Garrett. Well, Garrett two for two with two RBIs and a walk. This guy's just had an absolutely monster day at the plate. Again, went three for five in game one. He's five for seven in the series. Where's had Three two-run home runs and then had another two-run home run here today in game two is check. They did not check his swing. He went around. He's quickly behind on the count 0-2 to Shaw. This would be a big out for the Rangers here if they could get Garrett. Yeah. Well, even if they do, he's already a candidate for player of the week. 0-2 pitch. That one misses low for ball one, no question. I think you're going to have several guys on both of these teams that are probably going to end up being uh, nominated. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> One, two pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three, and there's two down. Second strikeout by Shaw. I really liked it. I don't know if anybody was paying attention, but the way Shaw took the mound, he was the first to come out of the dugout and march straight to the no, hill and pick up the ball. He's oh. dialed in. Well, he went after him on that one. Yep. A little extra on that. I think that last pitch to Garrett. As Brody Romero now will bat. He's 0 for 3 today. Granted out to short last time up in the fourth. Shaw right down the pipe for a called strike. Count is 0 and 1. Final score from Russellville, Arkansas Tech. Knocks off East Central 11 to 1 as Shaw delivers another called strike. Count quickly 0 and 2 now. No two outside for ball one. Update in Shawnee. Game two of their doubleheader. Watchtaw Baptist leading Oklahoma Baptist three to one. One two pitch. Fouled off down the third base side. We'll do it again at one and two. Shaw reminds me a little bit of uh, Swanson, Ethan, when he pitched for us. Um, you know, pretty much all business and he's got an arm. Comes right at the hitters. I saw Bicewanger's mom and dad here today. T Dub. One two bounces in off the turf. Count evens up two and two. Of course, Ranger baseball back tomorrow for the final game of the series. Ranger softball with a doubleheader tomorrow against Arkansas Monticello, 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Or actually, that was scheduled, I believe, for today. We'll have to see. I know those games were pushed back. We'll have we'll get the official time on those here shortly, and we can keep up with those live stats. Watch the video. This time is called by the batter Romero at the plate. Again, two balls, two strikes to the hitter Brody Romero with two down. Top half of the sixth. Two-two pitch. Foul ball lifted out of play to the right. It will be tomorrow at 1 and 3 o'clock for Northwestern softball. They're from Alvey Early Softball Field. And then the final game of the three-game series will be on Sunday at 11 a.m. See how close we are to third base line here. 2-2 Two -two pitch again. This one hit foul as that one gets way out of play to the right. Yeah, Grace is nearly hugging that line. Yeah, trying to take away that extra base in case he comes that way. Another 2-2 pitch up coming once more. Fly ball into right center. That one hit hard off the batter, Romero. That one could be troubles. That gets by Sachin off the wall. Here's the throw back in by Sayre, but it's a two-out double for Romero. 
So the tying run now will come to the plate for the Weevils. Well, that's a pretty good at bat for him. First hit of the day, too, from Romero. Again, he was 0 for 3. Yeah. What did that plate appearance? Another tying run will be Noah Estrom. Noah Estrom. Estrom flew out to right in the second, walked and scored a run in the fourth, and singled again in the fourth. Again, after Monticello, Arkansas Monticello had batted around. And the delivery. It's a line shot right at Wiltshire. It pops up out of his glove, falls right back in for the final out. And that's a heck of a play and concentration by Wiltshire to end the inning for the Rangers. No runs on one hit, no errors with one left on. Bottom of the six we go. Rangers lead it 13 to 11 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network. Holder Drug has been serving the community of Alva since 1952. When you are in need of medication, healthcare items, and more, look to none other than Holder Drug, Alva's local pharmacy. Holder Drug is locally and family owned and is always ready to serve you. They offer convenient drive through pickup as well as free delivery with your medication. They also offer a number of gift ideas for those special holidays. For more information, visit their website, www.holderdrug.com, or stop by 513 Barnes Avenue in downtown Alva. Community Bank has been serving Alva, Oklahoma, and the surrounding area since 1984. Community Bank was founded by local community members who wanted to ensure the banking needs of the community were being met. It has been our goal since inception to provide customer-focused services and community development. Our customers are friends, neighbors, and never just a number. We believe in investing in our community, and we pride ourselves in being your hometown bank. Community Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Do you need assistance taking care of yourself or a loved one? Beatles Nursing Home in Alva is here for you. We offer safe, high-quality, affordable nursing care while meeting all care guidelines for living. Call us at 580-327-1274 to learn more about our admissions process to place your loved one in our care. When it's time to choose a nursing home facility, we'll hope you'll consider Beatles Nursing Home located at 916 Noble Street in Alva. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium. Dustin go alongside Steve Burrows, your Ranger baseball crew here tonight. So again, we move to the bottom of the six. Rangers clinging to a 13 to 11 lead. Again, this one's scheduled for seven. The Rangers trying to add some insurance runs here as Carson Wright will lead it off. And Rangers drop game one of the doubleheader. 17 to 8, trying to force the rubber match tomorrow. As Mercado ready to go, the first pitch to Wright catches the outside corner for a called strike, and we're underway here in the sixth. It'll be Carson Wright, Paul Sachin, and Chad Green do up for Northwestern. Looks like he took a little something off that pitch just to get that strike on the outside corner. The 0-1, that is just crushed in the air to center. Back goes the center fielder over the head of Hawthorne. Here's the throw back in, but it's going to be a leadoff double off the bat of Carson Wright as he has his second hit of the day. And the Rangers have a runner in scoring position to open up things here in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, I'd like to see us... Uh, Make sure that pitcher is going to throw quality strikes here. And Paul, we've got to get the runner to third base once he gets done with that bat. Sachin one for two today. And that big grand slam in the second, struck out in the first, and walked and scored a run in the fourth. But Bit of a shift on for him to pull. Mercado delivers a called strike to Sachin. Count is 0-1. Looked a little bit up compared to what we've seen, but maybe it's just the, the light conditions. <laughs> it's throwing me off a little bit, too. Quick bat. The 0 1. Boy, that looked good there, but count evens up one ball, one strike. We'll take it. Yeah, that looked better than the previous one. Okay, you should be ready, Paul. Make contact. This guy's got some velocity. 1-1 one, one pitch. Up and away for ball two. And one thing again to keep in mind, but the Weevils have left seven runners on. The Rangers zero so far today. Mm. That's, uh, if this pans out this lead and we get the win, it's, that's key. 2-1 pitch. Make it three and one now. 
Yeah, that's a good sign when you scored 13 runs. It's not when you've only when you've been at, when you've been shut out. That's yeah. That's how you know it's bad. <laughs> Three one pitch up coming to Sachin. Marcano turns and looks at the runner at second. Now comes home with a three one. Ooh. And I think he was hit by the pitch. He was. So the Rangers now with runners at first and second with nobody out as Chad Green will bat. Tough day here in game two. Struck out in the second, granted out to third in the third, and granted out to second in the fourth. But a big spot here for Chad Green. I don't see him as a guy that you're going to have him bunt these two guys over, but uh, at least go to right field with an outside pitch. That pitch was outside, but it's off the plate for ball one. I mean, be looking to hit behind the runners if he doesn't groove you one that you can traditionally, you know, your wheelhouse drive out of here. Just meet it, move the runners. The 1 0, that's right over the middle of the plate. Count evens up 1 1. And I'd like to see Wright get a bigger lead out there a second. Get a bigger lead. There's nobody holding you. 1-1 one, one pitch. Green swings and misses there. Count moves to 1-2. and two. Trying to chase that one a little bit on the outside. Yep. Happy birthday, Michael. <laughs> now, whoever Michael is, happy birthday. 1-2 pitch. Swung out and missed for strike three. And there's one down. And where that crowd mic is positioned kind of catches everybody if they have little conversations walking here in front of the press box. The Rangers, baseman, Hagen As Hagen Barcelo, who is, well, he's had a day, folks. He's three for three with four RBIs. A pair of home runs and also a single in the third. I'm worried, worried about the dogs down in Houston. As Barcelo looks at a cold strike, count is 0-1. Ed Carson right at second after the double. Sachin was hit by the pitch. Green struck out for the second time today. Wright's got good speed. Base hit will score. Here's the 0-1. Oh. Swung on and missed as Marcelo chased that one up in the zone. Count is 0-2 now. No balls, two strikes to Hagen Barcelo. Their third baseman is protecting that line too. 0-2 pitch just off the end of the bat as Barcelo gets a piece. We'll do it again at 0-2. Count is 0-2. 0-2 pitch up coming, Mercado. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Mercado, and there's two down. Yeah, he's buckled down. Stayed outside on that last one there. So he's, he's got speed on his pitch. So now to the plate, the center fielder, Trevor Sayre. Mercado's first pitch to Sayre. Ground ball hit to second. This should do it as Cripps will field. Throws to first and the 4-3 put out when the Rangers strand two. Here in the sixth, no runs on one hit, no errors with two left on. Top of the seventh we go. Last chance for the Weevils when we come back. As Rangers lead at 13 to 11 on the Community Bank scoreboard. This is Northwestern Baseball. Brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Here at Bank Central, we like to shoot for three, and that includes our services to you. From fee-free checking accounts to competitive CD rates and all the way to consumer lending, stop by any of our locations in Alva, Enid, Woodward, and Cherokee, or call 580-327-1122 to talk with one of our qualified professionals. Bank Central, where we're centered on you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Certain fees and restrictions may apply. You put in the work, and every day you go out and prove it again. You're an expert in your field. That's what farmers do every day. They go out and get the job done. If that's you, then Farm Credit of Western Oklahoma wants to thank you. For a livestock or crop loan, equipment loan, ag real estate, or operating loan, we will tailor a loan to your need. 
Talk to one of our ag specialists by phone or stop by a branch today. Farm Credit of Western Oklahoma, an equal housing opportunity lender. Online at farmcreditloans.com. Well, we move into the top of the seventh. Here from Meyer Stadium, Northwestern on top, 13 to 11 on the Community Bank School Board. As we're at the top of the order for the Weevils as Rock Hawthorne will step in. He's two for four today. Flew out to left last time up. That was back in the fifth. As the first pitch from Shaw just misses inside for ball one, and we're underway here in the seventh inning. Wachita Baptist leading Oklahoma Baptist four to one in the third from Shawnee. 1-0, make it 2-0 and now. It'll be Hawthorne followed by Camden Tanner, Cade Kinsia. Here's the 2-0. In there for a called strike. Yeah, moves to 2-1. and one. Yeah, Hawthorne was waiting to see if he was going to throw a strike. Now that he has, he'll be swinging. The 2-1 ground ball hit to first. Bradford will field. He'll take it himself, and there's one down. Excellent. Excellent result of, with that at bat. He's a dangerous guy. He gets on base, and look out. Camden Tanner now to the plate. He's had a big day. RBI single in the first. Had the home run in the second. And then drove in two more in the fourth. As the count moves to 1-0 to Camden Tanner, he's again 3-4 for four today with six RBIs. Goodness. That's two players today. Garrett had six RBIs in game one. Tanner with six here in game two as the count moves to 2-0. and oh. And like it did the first batter against Hawthorne. Steps off the back of the mound and kind of collects himself. Should throw a strike here. 2-0 pitch upstairs for ball three. Yeah, make him make him earn his passage here. 3 0 pitch. That's across the plate for a called strike. Count yeah, goes to three and one now. Three one from Shaw. And he went around and just got a piece to foul it off. Count goes to three and two now. Yeah, the bat never did cross the plate. I mean that ball hit as bad as it was still really pointed back towards the uh, the 8 o'clock position. Full count. Big pitch up coming here. Left-handed hitter. 3-2 from Shaw into the turf for ball four, and it's a one-out walk drawn by Camden Tanner. And the tying run will come to the plate with Cade Cancilla. No batting first baseman, Cade Cancilla. Still it today, one for three at the plate. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run in the fourth. Had a double in the fifth. Here's the delivery. Hmm. Right in there for a strike. Count is 0-1. Yeah, knee high, outer part of the plate. Pitch number 36 from Jacob Shaw. He's given up two hits, one walk, and two strikeouts. He's done, he's done well. Here's the 0-1. Into the turf for ball two. Nice stop from the tall. Count evens up one and one. I feel the Rangers would love to see a ground ball double play to end this thing right here. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see a steal, uh, you know, unless the ball gets away. Um, Tanner does have one stolen base, but oh, and that is just absolutely crushed down the left field line, and this game is tied. Two run shot. Mike Edsilla has tied it up here in the seventh. It's now 13 to 13 with one out. And he absolutely tagged that ball. Yep. That uh, came over the middle of the plate. That's his fifth home run of the year. So Coach Bowen is going to come out and have a word with Jacob Shaw. This mound visit brought to you by G&G &G Home Furnishings. Back to Meyer Stadium after this. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. 
Get no better deal in the country than at Croft Country, located in Alva, Oklahoma. Croft Country is the dealer for vehicles in Northwest Oklahoma. Croft Country is locally owned and operated since 1985, offering a full line of award-winning brands, including Chevy and GMC. From the time you enter our showroom for sales or service, you can expect to be treated like family. So the next time you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, come see us right here in Alva, located at 401 East Oklahoma Boulevard. Well, the visit on the mound is over as we welcome you back to Meyer Stadium. Cancilla again with a two-run shot. Puts the Weevils back in his game. Tie get a 13 as Chaz Poppy will step in, who's one for four today with three RBIs. And a hitter you definitely have to be careful with. Had the three-run home run in the fourth as there's a grounder hit foul to the left. Count will be 0-1. Again, there's one out top of the seventh. Weevils got one in the first, two more in the, three more in the second, seven in the fourth, and now two in the seventh. Rangers with seven in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth. And Sean delivers upstairs for ball one. County wins up one ball, one strike. I don't know that he's a good at breaking ball hitter. He's, he's a fastball hitter, so. 1-1. One, one. Just missed there. Count moves to 2-1 and one now. Do one pitch, a absolute towering fly ball. I have absolutely lost it. Jacob Wilshire, though, he's camps underneath it. He retreats back. He'll make the grab, and there's two down. That ball got so high, it got above the press box. <laughs> yeah, it did. It's amazing, those lights out there in the stadium, they don't point up. No. So, yeah. you know, there's a little bit of a glow to it. If it gets that high, you better hang on to that glow until it gets back to Full glow. Second baseman Chase Cripps will step to the plate as he tags one into center right at Sayre on the run, makes the grab. Had to kind of readjust, but he makes the final out. And we will head to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Weevils tie it up on the two run shot as they pick up two runs on one hit, no errors with nobody left on. Bottom of the seventh we go. Rangers and the Weevils tied at 13 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network. Anger, anxiety, worry, and disbelief. These are normal emotions to feel with an unplanned pregnancy. You have options, and you are not alone. Hope Pregnancy Center in Alva is a safe, confidential, and compassionate place to land. Hope offers free pregnancy testing and ultrasound, and you will be provided education for all your options. Remember, you aren't alone. We can help with hope. Visit thinkunpregnant.org. That's thinkunpregnant.org. To prevent medication from getting into the wrong hands, it is crucial to store it out of sight and out of the reach of children and visitors. In addition, it is important to dispose of unwanted, expired, and unused medications in a safe manner. For more information, visit OKIMready.org. That's OKIMREADY.org or call 988 Oklahoma's Mental Health Lifeline. This program is funded by Northwestern Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Prevention Services, and Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Dustin go to alongside Steve Barrows and uh, well, we got him right where we want him, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, you want things in your hands, and uh, it's in our hands. It certainly is. It's, um, we don't need to. We don't necessarily have to look for a long ball drama. We just need base runners. We need to make something happen. Colby Grace will lead it off. One for two today with an RBI. He's walked once and struck out once. He struck out last time up in the fourth. It'll be Grace followed by Vital and Wiltshire as Grace looks at strike one and we're underway here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Hit score tied at 13. And the 0-1. Just outside. Count evens up. One ball, one strike. Yeah, it'll be a shock if they come inside on him. Yeah, that'd be an absolute mistake. Yeah. See what Mercado does here. And the 1-1. Did he go around? He did. Count moves to 1-2 and two now. Boy, those were hard to lay off. That's where you just, your eyes get big. and you Yep. 1-2 yep. <laughs> pitch. 
Ball two, he lays off there. Count evens up two and two. Two balls, two strikes to Colby Grace. Setting up outside. 2-2. Two, two. That one fouled back as it gets over the press box. We'll do it again at 2-2 two two now. Some of the other numbers in the game. Weevils left seven on, Rangers two. Weevils with three doubles, Rangers with one. Rick Lester with one more home run, 5-4. to four. And Rangers have only walked three times, Weevils five. 2-2 two, two pitch. That's a fly ball lifted into center. Shallow center, it will be Cripps, the second baseman will go over and make the play. And there's one down. What do you call that thing in golf where you hit it onto the green, it's really high, coming down, leaves a hole. You gotta, uh, God, I used to know this. I played golf, but it's been a lifetime ago. Flop shot? No, no. You gotta repair the hole. Oh, the divot. Di oh, divot? Well, that's yeah, what you yeah, repair, yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about just the shot in oh, general. No. <laughs> No, that would have left a divot big time. So Brady Bejarano will come in and pitch it for the Rangers. 286 hitter, 22nd appearance for Bejarano as he looks at strike one. Bejarano hit, pinch hitting for Zach Vitale. Bejarano, 12 hits and 42 at bats, 11 runs. Does have one triple and five RBIs. He's yet to homer this season. Stepped off the rubber here. Step out of the box. So Mercado will reset, now ready to go with the 0-1 pitch. Here it is to Bejarano. Foul the, the inside of the bat, count will be 0-2. Yeah, I think that was off the plate inside. That one fouled back to the net. Count 0-2 to Bejarano. This pitcher's kind of in our head right now. We can simplify it. And that one got away from the catcher as that one way up high. Count moves to one and two now. Bejarano as a pinch hitter this year is one for three at the plate. Doesn't help if a pitcher's throwing in the 90s and throwing it above the catcher's head. <laughs> Just like, oh no. One, two to Bejarano. Upstairs for ball two. And again, Mercado, you can hear it hit that glove. He is bringing heat. Yep. Bejarano against right handed pitching. 10, for, 10 of 36, a 278 hitter this year. Look for it here. 2 2 bounces in off the turf in front of the plate. Count goes full three and two. Last three pitches have had no real control at all on that. Sure, if nerves are getting him a little bit. But don't chase one out of the zone, but you got to protect the plate. 3 2 to Bay Hirano, and it's ball four. <laughs> Good eye from Bay Hirano draws the one out walk, and the Rangers have a base runner here in the bottom of the seventh. Not sure we'd have got that call had the three previous pitches been completely out of the zone. So Jacob Wiltshire. Coach going through signs. Looks like we've got the ambulance pulling out. Wiltshire came in this season 10 for 51 with runners on, hitting 196. That was coming into game one as Wiltshire a bun attempt and missed it. That one count as 0-1. Again, one out, bottom of the seventh inning. Wiltshire's 0 for 3 today with a strikeout. Just meet it. The 0 1 showing bunt again. This one bunted foul back to the net. Count 0 and 2 now. On deck is Dylan Bradford. We'll go back to the top of the order after this at bat. The 0-2 pitch. That one upstairs for ball one. And Wiltshire backed off, showing bunt again. The 1-2. Popped up, bunted foul. He'll be out, and there's two down. Oh, he, he, he 
had the barrel of the bat behind the plate, and the handle was taken out towards third. He never got the bat squared around. So we go back to the top of the order with Dylan Bradford, who's one for three today with an RBI. Make him throw us a strike. Got another step on the lead here. First pitch to Bradford. Low for ball one. Got moves to one and oh. Four strikeouts now for Mercado as he's thrown 42 pitches. He's only given up one hit. Yeah. It's kind of been a force. And one hit was the Carson Wright double back in the sixth. But he's showing some vulnerability here in this bottom half. The 1 0 make it 2 0 now. He's missed a lot upstairs, too, as yep. we're going to see a visit to the mound. It brought to you, it's brought to you by G&G &G Home Furnishings. 30-second break, and we come back. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network, 105.7. When was the last time you evaluated your investment goals? With our ever-changing environment, it's time. Talk to us about locking in a high, long-term fixed interest rate and put your money to work for you. I'm Whitney Gum, and here at e j Financial, we work with you to implement a custom plan to fit your financial goals. Call our office today at 580-327-2552 to book a complimentary financial review. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, member FINRA, SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Cambridge and e j Financial are not affiliated. Welcome back out of our break. It is a 2-0 count to the hitter, Dylan Bradford. Runner on first with two down, bottom of the seventh inning. If the Rangers can't win it here in the bottom of the seventh, we will head to extra innings. 2-0 to Bradford. Just outside for ball three. Yep, I'm not sure he gave any signs, but I'm... I'm making him throw me too. I'm making him throw me too. Set up inside, and that one's across the plate, though, for a called strike. Count goes to three and one. <laughs> and we they've pitched Bradford inside several at bats uh, today. Three one pitch. That one's inside for ball four. Two out of the last three hitters have walked, and the Rangers have the winning run and scoring position at second bases. No, really, you're going to put the bat into arguably one of your better hitters is Carson Wright. We do see action in the Monticello bullpen. They do have a right-handed pitcher up. But I'm going to make him throw me a good strike. First pitch to Wright. That swung on and missed for strike one. And that was very hittable. He just couldn't tell if he swung under it or over top of it. Right, two for three today. He's also walked once. He doubled last time up, singled in the fourth. The 0-1. We laid, we brought a little off of that one, didn't he? That was a great pitch. Down his 0-2, he'd been, been nothing but heat. Yeah. It? Took a little something off of it. Hit that outside corner. They got a defensive hit here. Here's the 0-2, upstairs for ball one. One ball, two strikes to Carson Wright. Bejarano at second, Bradford at first. I'm gonna go fastball outside, knees. Get one, two to right. Swung on and missed for strike three, and that'll do it. And wow. We are headed to extra innings here in Alva. No runs, no hits. No errors with two left on. Top of the eighth we go. Score tied at 13 on the Community Bank scoreboard. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network 105.7. KNS Tire in Alva has been locally owned and operated since 2004. While every business claims to be the best, KNS Tire is the best. Our satisfied customers speak for themselves by coming back to us each and every time. Our amazing services go beyond a regular tune-up or tire rotation. Our team is well-trained and able to take care of all your car care needs, including preventative maintenance, wheel alignment, brakes, and more. Visit knstire.com for more information or come see us at 2590 College Boulevard right here in Alva. 
The Tacoma Farmers Co-op is a proud supporter of Ranger and Goldbug activities since 1916. They have been here to serve you with all your farming and ranching needs with a wide range of goods and services from fuel, hardware, fencing, tires, feed and seed, plus fertilizer. They're here to meet your needs. Choose to trade with a co-op that gives its profits back to you. To learn about the Tacoma Co-op Advantage, stop by one of five locations in Moreland, Freedom, Winoka, Jet, and Tacoma, or visit them at TacomaCoop.com and get a better service at a better place. Welcome back as we move into extra innings here in game two of our doubleheader. Northwestern and Arkansas Monticello tied at 13 as Jacob Shaw back out of the mound for the Rangers as he will pitch to Kirk Wolf to open up the eight, followed by Aiden Garrett and Brody Romero. Unless the Weevils decide to pinch hit at any point here in the eighth inning. First pitch from Shaw. He delivers a call strike and we're underway here in the eighth. Here's the 0-1, and that is ripped into left, but on the run making the grab will be Carson right on the fly ball, and there's one down. Not sure what part of the bat that hit, maybe the end of it, but uh, you, know, you would think it would have gone a lot further than that, but it didn't. <laughs> yeah, and with the way it kind of sounded. Yeah. And but. he got around, he turned on it and everything he'd want, but it just. Oh. Yeah, the ever dangerous Aiden Garrett to the plate. Did strike out last time up back in the sixth as Shaw misses low for ball one. I have to go check on the numbers here, but this may be the most innings we've seen Shaw pitch this season. The 1-0 fly ball into right center. This one is going to be caught by Sachin. And once again, just the way it's out of the bat. Uh, but it is going to be out number two. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. They're contesting it because Sation, it came out of his hand or his glove early. Well, hold on. Now Coach Bowen is coming out with the home plate umpire. I, again, it looked like Sation had caught the ball. And I had looked down to record it onto my, my sheet here, and now we're going to have the home plate umpire go out with the umpire in the field. So this is going to be an interesting discussion. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have happened if, if Sation would have been clean with the ball, but he wasn't, so this could go either way. The original call, I don't know if there was an original call made. I don't know if uh, the field umpire made the call. This is the most innings that Shaw has pitched this season. His long, other long outing as he went two and two-thirds against Henderson State. Gave up one hit and had four strikeouts in that game. Conference about this one still going on in front of the pitcher's mound. And he is called out at first base, so there will be two down. That's a big call. Yeah, uh, Monticello coach wants an explanation for that. <clears throat> if we go back and look at it on replay, you can see where this could have gone either way. I mean, really, from what I saw. Well, I think if they'd have called him safe, this place probably would have erupted, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he actually had it in his in his glove just momentarily, and then it came out. Now, was it the transfer? Uh, how close was his hand to the ball? On you know. Well, yeah, you transfer. Head coach at Arkansas Monticello still getting his. Oh, and he's just got tossed. The home plate umpire has just tossed him. So he obviously very unhappy. Thought it should, his. You know, his players should have been safe. Yeah. Uh, again, it goes back to a little bit. I'm not sure if there was a call made. Uh, I didn't, of course, I wasn't looking at the umpire. I was just noticing the ball down on the ground. Now, yeah, so he'll be replaced at third base by one of the other assistant coaches for Arkansas Monticello. Yeah, so we're back to baseball as <laughs> Brody Romero will step into the batter's box with two down as Shaw. First pitch is fouled back over the press box. Count will be 0-1. You know, the one disappointment with having the crowd mic where it is, we weren't able to catch any of that conversation, of course, where it normally would be back behind home plate. And we do have actually a pinch hitter for Romero. 
we were told. Parker Dorrance, the junior infielder out of Arvita, Colorado. Yeah. Dorrance. That hits that deep fly ball into left center. That one off the wall. Dorrance was rounded first. He's headed for second. And Dorrance has a big two-out pinch hit double and a runner in scoring position. Oh, I was just afraid that thing was going to carry like so many we've already seen today. <laughs> but, uh, you know, now the sun's gone down. The ball's not quite as lively. Boy, well, big spot and a big hit from Parker Dorrance. Dorrance with his 28th hit of the year. That's also his seventh double, his 32nd appearances. Noah, I believe, I think we may have had another pinch hitter. Oh, we do. That is Estrem up there at the plate as he fouls off the first pitch. Count will be 0 1. Nice curveball there to lead it off. 51 pitches now thrown from Jacob Shaw. Again, this is his fourth inning of work. Those are starter numbers. <laughs> no doubt. Here's the 0-1. And that one swung on and missed. As Estrem chased that one way out of the zone into the turf. He's behind in the count, 0-2 now. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing on that pitch. He's shaking his head like, I'm not sure what I was doing either. Anyway. No balls, two strikes to Noah Estrem. He's one for three today and one walk. Shaw checks the runner at second from the stretch, delivers home with the 0-2. Grounder hit to third, Grace will field. He'll throw to first in time for the 5-3 put out, and that'll do it for the Weevils in the eighth. As again, the Rangers will once again come up with the bat with a chance to win it. No runs on one hit, no errors with one left on. Bottom of the eighth we go, score tied at 13 on the Community Bank scoreboard. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network. Naloxone is a medication designed to rapidly reverse opioid overdose. A person who is experiencing an overdose can't administer naloxone to themselves. Anyone can carry naloxone, give it to someone experiencing an overdose, and potentially save a life. That's why everyone should consider having naloxone. For more information, visit okimready.org. That's okimready.org. This program is funded by Northwestern Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Prevention Services and Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. 818 Diner has consistently provided the city of Alba with quality comfort food and great service since opening in 2019. Join us for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Some of our popular menu items to choose from include the BCB Burger, the French Dip, and our staples such as Terry's Chicken Fried Steak, Don's Hamburger Steak, and Joe's Chicken Tenders. Open Monday and Wednesday through Sunday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and open for dinner Wednesday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you want a variety of menu items and friendly service to give you that local diner feeling, visit 818 Diner right here in Alba. Dean Gall Real Estate and Auction has been serving clients in Oklahoma and Kansas for nearly 37 years. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, we are your real estate professionals. We will get you the top dollar for your property, whether it be at auction or private sale. Get with Dean Gall Real Estate and Auction if you're wanting to buy a ranch, good farmland, sell or lease minerals, or buy a home. Visit our website at deangallauction.com to browse available listings. Talk to Dean, Steve, or Todd at 580 580- 327-8217 or stop by the office in Alva where you're always greeted with a smile. Come and see us. Welcome back to Glass Family Field at Meyer Stadium as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning here in extra innings. Northwestern and Arkansas Monticello tied at 13. Again, leading things off for the Rangers to start here in the eighth will be Paul Sachin. And it looks like I believe Parker Dorrance has taken over at third for Brody Romero after coming in to pitch hit in the top of the eighth. Sachin, one for two today. Again, had the grand slam in the second as he swings and misses there. Count will be 0-1. What's this guy's pitch count? He's up over 50. They're about even. He yeah. and Jacob Shaw. Here's the 0-1. Missing upstairs. Count evens up. One ball, one strike now. And the 1-1. Swung out and missed for strike two. Count moves to one and two now.
Sachin last time up was hit by a pitch in the bottom of the sixth. Mercado delivers, swung on a miss for strike three as he's got his six strikeouts that's coming out of relief. Yeah, just kind of staying away from the power of our hitters. Now batting for the Rangers. So now batting will be Chad Green, who's 0 for 4 today. Struck out twice, struck out last time up in the sixth. He'll be followed by Hagen Barcella. Continue to see action of the bullpen. Green swings and misses there for strike one. Count is 0-1. There's the 0-1 to Green. Staying outside and he swings and misses again. Count is 0-2. It wasn't even close on that one. Shorten up, guard the plate. Need you on base. And the 0-2. Laid off this time, they're gonna appeal and say he did not go around. Count will be one and two though. Well, again, if you're the Weevils, you wanna win the series. If you're the Rangers, you wanna even this thing up. Yep. One, two pitch, swung on and miss for strike three outside again, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Mercado. That is strikeout <clears throat> number seven. Yep. Yeah, trying to take an outside pitch to the Opposite field, the field. That's 36 strikeouts now on the season. So with two down, bottom of the eighth, it will be Hagen Barcelo, who's three for four today with four RBIs. He's hit two home runs so far today. Rolling outside for ball one. Can't imagine Marcato gives much of anything to Barcelo to hit here. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah nothing fat anyway, but I'd, I'd nibble the corners. 1-0. Swung on and missed. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. Came inside on him, and that was a battle of speed. Fast bat and fast pitch. Pitch number 60. Now 61 is swung on and missed for strike two. And Mercado one strike away from striking out the side here in the eighth. <clears throat> you know, I think he's, I think we're swinging underneath his pitches. Start higher, maybe on our one two outside. Tried the corner, and that one just missed. County mids up two and two, even though the Monticello infield thought it was strike three. Yeah, that's a <laughs> two two to Barcelo and the delivery. That one fouled back over the press box. We'll do it again at two and two. A piece of it again. We're here in the bottom of the eighth inning. <clears throat> what a good one this has been. I would have expected this with these two teams. 2-2 two -two pitch. Upstairs for ball three. Count goes full. Three and two now. Should Barcelo reach? Oh, sitting on deck is Trevor Sayre. Yeah, he's having to back off a little bit, try to get a strike. And uh, that's throwing off his accuracy a little bit. 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed for strike three as Mercado strikes out the side and that'll do it in the eighth as we will now move on to the ninth. Rangers and the Weevils tied at 13. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. Top of the ninth we go. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network 105.7. Spring is here and so are the savings at G&G Home Furnishings in Alba. Right now it's our annual anniversary sale happening through the month of April. Mattresses starting at $299, Lazy Boy recliners at $499, sofas at $399, dining room sets at $599, and bedroom sets starting at just $329. Don't miss out on all the savings throughout the month of April, so stop in and browse during our anniversary sale happening at G&G Home Furnishings located at 2107 College Boulevard right here in Alba. Looking for the best in lawn care? Peak Environment has you covered. We offer a wide range of services, including full service mowing, weed control, Christmas light installation, and more. Peak Environment provides efficient and affordable services across Northwest Oklahoma with branches in Alva, Enid, and Woodward. Call our office today at 580-748-8003 for a free quote on any service. That's Peak Environment, 748-8003. Proud supporter of all Ranger and Goldbug Athletics. 
The Alva Moose Lodge is a proud supporter of all Northwestern and Alva public school activities and strives to be the heart of the community through fundraisers and community-based events that make a difference in the lives of individuals, kids, and families throughout Northwest Oklahoma. On a national basis, the Moose Fraternity provides at-risk children with a second chance at life and its senior members a comforting retirement at its five-star senior facility in Florida. If you would like to see how you can help make a difference in the lives of those in need, stop by the Alva Moose Lodge Monday through Saturday from 4 p.m to 10 30 p.m at 302 7th street to learn more keeping your car clean is an inexpensive way to protect its value shirley shine car wash located west of love offers a six-bay self-serve car wash including three truck bays your wash options include soap tire cleaner foamy brush wax spot free rinse and air chamois and you can pay with credit debit card or quarter don't just clean the outside clean the inside with its self-serve car vacuum you can also clean your pet with their self-serve dog walk. Company vehicle? Be sure to ask about our fleet account. So the next time your vehicle needs rinse or detailed, come by Shirley Shine Car Wash, located right here in Alva. Center fielder Rock Hawthorne will lead things off as we open up play here in the ninth. The score tied at 13 on the Community Bank scoreboard. Hawthorne is two for five here in game two of our doubleheader. On deck is Camden Tanner. As a new pitcher on for the Rangers, Zach McCaffron. McCaffron, the six foot three, right handed junior out of Enid. 3.77 earned run average, one and one, 12th appearance. Has started one game, does have a save this year. 14 and a third, nine hits, seven runs, six of those earned. Six walks, 10 strikeouts as the 1 0 is swung on a miss. County ends up one ball, one strike. I was told yesterday that uh, I believe it's his father that was uh, going to be relocating to the Alpha Vision Clinic down in the square. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, dad. 1-1 one, one pitch. Count. That one misses low for ball two. Teams are hitting just 196 against uh, McCaffrey this season. And Hawthorne followed by Tanner and Ancilla. 2-1 pitch. Ground ball hit to first. It will be fielded by Bradford. He'll take it himself, and there's one down here in the top of the ninth. Always big when you get a dangerous leadoff hitter on that's got wheels or get him off, get him out. Camden Tanner now will hit, and he's three for six today with six RBIs. Walked once and also struck out once. The Weevils have now sent 41 to the plate. The Rangers have sent 34. I'd like to thank again uh, the Bull and Doug Whittett. The dugout and that club. is a deep fly ball into center. This one going back, going back, and it's over the wall for a home run. And Camden Tanner has just given Arkansas Monticello the lead here in the ninth. A lot of power in that uh, short stature of his. Isn't there? Certainly is. As he comes up with his second home run of the game, give him seven RBIs on the day as he's now four for six at the plate. Reminds me of a Lenny Dykstra type player. Short, powerful. So it's 14 to 13 now, Arkansas Monticello. It's Kinsilla to the plate. That one bounces in on the outside in the other batter's box. Gotta be one and oh. Yeah, you gotta calm yourself and get back from top here. Hope your offense can help you out in the bottom half. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Tried the corner and missed. Count even or count moves to 2-0 now. On deck is Chaz Poppy. Two-o pitch. Make it three and O's. That's low and outside for ball three. Caffron again before that home run was, well, actually against right-handed hitters before. This would be the first right-handed here he's faced. Right-handed hitters are nine for 40, hitting 225 as he walks on four straight pitches. So there'll be a runner on first with one out here in the top of the ninth as Chaz Poppy will bat. That's kind of the first time I've witnessed a bat flip on a walk. <laughs> 
as it looks like Coach Pickford will go out and have a mound visit. We'll take a timeout for the mound visit, brought to you by G&G Home Furnishings. One out here in the top of the ninth. Rangers trailing at 14-13. This is Northwestern Baseball, brought to you by Holder Drug on the Ranger Sports Network. At Ignite Physical Therapy, we assist in the therapy of many different aspects, such as advanced problem solving, joint mobilization, treatment of adverse neural tension, evaluation and treatment of muscle imbalance, tissue-specific exercise, and patient education. Dr. Jared Hayda and staff want to get you back to the life that you had before your injury. They have helped so many for rehabilitation, and they can do the same for you. Stop by and see the staff at Ignite Physical Therapy on 521 Street or make an appointment by calling 580-327-3331. Your agency of choice for all types of insurance is McDermott Insurance in Alva. For home, auto, farm, or business insurance, the McDermott Agency will protect what you value most by providing the best coverage and client service possible. To get your custom professional insurance review, call McDermott Insurance at 580-327-3500 or visit them at 526 Flynn Street in Alva. McDermott Insurance. They can't predict the future, but they can insure it. Out of the plate, the DH, number two, Chaz Poppy. Basically, in 01 County, he's one for five today with three RBIs. And the three run home run in the fourth. That's his lone hit for the day. The 0 1 for McCaffrey. And that's in there for a called strike. Count quickly 0 and 2 now. Oh, good pitch. Breaking ball inside corner, breaking ball outside corner. This is a fastball hitter. But he may change his ways here if he sees another breaking ball. <clears throat> No balls, two strikes to Chaz Poppy. Has not struck out today. The 0-2. Yeah. Didn't call. Wow. I got to tell you, I, I don't know what was wrong with that pitch. I, that, that was unbelievable. Yeah, it looked like it came in in the belt right over the middle of the plate. So. Well, the count moves to one and two. Here's the delivery. Swung on and missed for strike three as he blew it right by him, and there's two down. But, <laughs> as I'll remind folks, it's the hardest job in sports to fish you. Two down, top of the ninth as Chase Cripps will step in. 0 for 4 with one walk today. Get this last out. First pitch to Cripps. That's in there for a called strike as he paints the corner. Count is 0-1. Here's the 0-1. Cripps went around. That good, went into the good. turf. Yeah, good pitch. Looked like a fastball coming to the knees, and he's sitting on it, and it wound up coming to the turf. Like Right behind the plate. 0 oh, 2 count to Cripps. Getting the runner on first. Still after the walk. The 0 2 pitch, he'll take off and just miss there as it's a stolen base. Now, a runner in scoring position. Yeah, kind of stole that on the pitcher. He's got a, got a high kick. And, but I wish we still would have gone, to, gone for the the attempt to try to get him out on the steal. One, two pitch. Inside and off the plate. Count evens up two and two now to Chase Cripps. Get on deck. For Arkansas Monticello is Kirk Wolf. He's seeing a diet of breaking balls here. Out of the four pitches, I think three of them have been. Two, two pitch. Did he go around? I'm going to say he did not as they appeal. The count goes full now, three and two. Yep. Got to bring it in the zone. Hope he comes with a curveball. I'm not sure this pitcher will drive this fastball. Three, two. That one lifted foul and out of play towards the Arkansas Monticello bullpen. We'll do it again. Three balls, two strikes to the hitter, Chase Cripps. And both teams now have combined to hit 10 home runs, five apiece, 
3-2 is upstairs for ball four. Runners now at first and second. So Kirk, Kirk Wolf will bat here in the top of the ninth with the Weebles leading it 14-13. to 13. He is one for four today. A lone single and scored a run back in the fourth. And they got a force at any base. He's also walked once. Got to throw strikes. Here's the first pitch from McCaffrey, a breaking ball. Across the plate for a called strike. And again, the tough part about Cripps. Cripps was down 0-2. You had him down. Yeah. Checks the runner. Here's the 0-1. This is high and out of the zone. Countyman's up one ball, one strike, down to Wolf. Of course, the other big sporting event this weekend is Masters going on in Augusta. Yep. I haven't got to watch as much. We'll be watching, though, on Sunday as that pitch outside. Count moves to two and one now. Scotty Scheffler, the leader. Ian DeChambeau at six under, along with Max Homa. Only one I was ever at was the Crosby Pro-Am in 76. Good pitch. 2-1 pitch is swung on and missed, and that one low and into the turf. Nice stop behind home plate by Vital. Or actually, I believe that's Styles now back behind home plate. Two balls, two strikes to the hitter, Kirk Wolf. Let's see that same pitch. Now her fastball at the knees. 2-2. Two -two. This one's popped up. Shortstop. These Wiltshire. Oh, actually, it goes off the glove of Grace as he can't hang on, and a run's going to come in to score. As Cancilla will score all the way from second, and reaching on the air will be Wolf. That's yeah, tough luck, tough luck. I, I wish uh, Wiltshire would have called him off since it was more in front of him. But, you know, 99 out of 100 times, that would have been caught. When Cripps was able to move all the way to third. Runners now at first and third as UAM plates another run. They're second. They now lead by two. As Aiden Garrett will bat. Actually showed kind of a bunt that time as that misses low for ball one. Yep. The plane. Yeah, we didn't. It, it hadn't been like a couple weeks ago when they just come zooming in here all the time. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 upcoming to Aiden Garrett. Boy, he's got a big lead. Runner will take off for second stolen base for Kirk Wolf. And now two runners in scoring position. It is a 1-1 count, though. Yep. Get the batter here. Get out of the inning. Garrett, two for four today, two RBIs. Walked once, struck out once. 1-1 one, one pitch. What a bunt attempt. That's as he missed that one. Count moves to one and two. Anxious to see if they allow Mercado to come back out to finish this one or if they go to the bullpen. Yeah, I think I'd go to the bullpen. Of course, I don't know him, but he's thrown a lot of pitches. But this has been quite of a, you know, a little bit of a long break where you got to stiffen up. Oh, I was going to say that was actually strike three to Garrett. Apparently, the home plate umpire had it at strike three, so that's going to do it here in the inning for the Weevils as they will pick up two runs on one hit with one error. Two left on. Bottom of the ninth we go. Last chance for the Rangers when we come back. They trail it 15 to 13 on the Community Bank School Board. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug and the Rangers Sportsbook. Alva Health and Wellness is Alva's newest health care option, offering a broad array of services geared to address today's most common illnesses and injuries. Alva Health and Wellness offers services for you and your child, including sickness, wellness, chronic care management, vaccinations, weight loss, and so much more. Find more information online by visiting alvahealthandwellness.com or come by and make an appointment with Jeremy Logston in person at 515 College Avenue right here in Alva. 
Don't miss the Monster Truck Spring Nationals. One giant show this Saturday, 8 p.m. Crystal Beach Stadium, Woodward, Oklahoma. See the baddest trucks on the planet in ground-pounding, car-crushing action, including Animal House, driven by the world's youngest female driver. She's only 15 years old. She'll take on Dysfunctional, Kicking and Screaming, Redneck Rampage, and Sergeant Smash. Don't miss the Oklahoma Tough Truck Contest, where locals run for cash. Special VIP box seats and pit passes. Include attendance to the pre-show pit parties with trucks, autographs, and kids meet Batman, plus a superhero souvenir. You can even take a ride in a real monster truck. Tickets available at United Grocery, Napa, Cowboy Tax Shop, Woodward Steel, at the gate, or online at showclix.com. Sponsored by Advanced Real Estate Advisors and Cool Brothers Collision, Northwestern Electric Co-op, k Tire, Red Prairie, SPC, Red Dirt Gun and Pawn, and Great Plains Bank, Monster Truck Spring National, this Saturday, Woodward, be there. Center fielder number 27, Trevor Sayre, will lead it off. As we move to the bottom of the ninth, last chance for the Rangers. They trail 15 to 13. Sayre, two for four today, two RBIs as Mercado comes back out here in the ninth. And Sayre, Sayre actually kind of had showed bunt, but looks at a called strike. He does have great speed. There's no doubt he could bunt for a hit. The 0-1, fouled back over the press box. Count goes to 0-2 now. On deck is Colby Grace. Well, followed by what will be definitely a pinch hitter because Bejarano pinch, for, pinch hit for Zach Batal. The 0-2 pitch, swung on her miss for strike three. And the catcher tried to tag him out. Instead, he'll have to throw down to first. And there's one down. Four straight strikeouts now. For Mercado. Well, he's been money tonight for him. Actually, I take that back. That's five straight. So down to the plate, Colby Grace. Yeah, Mercado, 68 pitches, nine strikeouts. He's only given up the one hit. That one fouled out of play the right side off the bat of Grace. Count will be 0 and 1. No balls, one strike to Colby Grace in the delivery. Going away for ball one. County moves up 1 1. Yeah, took something off of that one. Still a fastball, but I mean. Here's the 1 1. That one misses for ball two. Count moves to 2 and 1. Ooh. Throw a strike here. Two balls, one strike. That's a line drive into center, down for a base hit. So Colby Grace with a one out single. <clears throat> yep. That's what we needed, base runner. Now that is the Rangers, catcher Trevor Styles. Now to the plate will be Trevor Stiles with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. His first at bat as that pitch misses upstairs for ball one. And yeah, let's try to work him deep. Catcher's going to go out and have a word. Well, if there's a signal question on uh, what pitch is going to be called or. Yeah, Noah Estrom going out to have a word with Mercado. The infield will all come in as well, except for a uh, oh, lone second baseman. He'll be out there on an island by himself. Yep, yep. <laughs> you guys got it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's 1-0 count with one out here in, in the bottom of the ninth inning. Rangers do have a runner on first. It's Colby Grace. Styles again. Started game one, was 0 for 4 at the plate, struck out twice. Looking for his first hit of the day. Chance to extend this one and keep the Rangers alive. Trail by two. Here's the 1-0. Styles swings and misses there. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. On deck is Jacob Wiltshire. 
It's almost like we're not picking it up out of his hand. 74 pitches thrown now. Is make it 75 as that pitch swung on or missed. Count one and two. Yeah, we're underneath almost all of them. And again, we told you Mercado coming into this matchup had thrown 23 innings this season. As he missed there for ball two. Count evens up two and two. At this point, he's gone four and a third. Two two pitch. It's cut from Styles. Fouls it back. Count will stay at two and two now. Just got a piece of that. Again, we're under on every swing. Two balls, two strikes to the hitter, Trevor Stiles. And Colby Grace at first. And the delivery. Just a bit high for ball three. Count goes full, three and two now. Yeah, I'm not sure what how he's gripping that ball, but it's coming in about 10 miles an hour slower than his fastball. 3-2 pitch to Stiles. Swung on and miss for strike three. And another strikeout for Mercado. That is number 10. Two down. And this will be pitch number 80. The first one to Jacob Wiltshire. Mercado, since coming in, has only given up two hits. The double to right in the sixth and then the single to Grace here in the bottom of the ninth. Wiltshire 0 for 4 today. Lays off that one. Miss up and out of the zone for ball one. Yeah, don't cheat yourself here. Swing at a good, good pitch, one you like. Here's the 1-0. And that pitch swung on and missed. Count evens up 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike to Wiltshire. And the delivery. Foul tipped back. Rangers down to their final strike. Count is one and two to Jacob Wiltshire. This guy's velocity, you just make solid contact, and the ball's gonna go. Here's the one, two. Upstairs for ball two. Count evens up two and two to Jacob Wiltshire. It's also the kind of pitcher back in the day when you had when we used wood bats, break them off in your hands because his, his, <laughs> his ball's so heavy. Two two to Wiltshire, swung on and missed for strike three as Mercado ends it with a strikeout and his eleventh of the game. As that'll do it as the Arkansas Monticello Weevils take both games of the doubleheader by a final score here in game two, 15 to 13 as they come back and win this one against the Rangers. The Rangers in the ninth, no runs on one hit, no errors with one left on. 15 to 13 is your final as the Weevils take both games here this uh, the afternoon and evening. Again, we will take a timeout. We'll come back, wrap it up with our McDermott Insurance post game show next. This is Northwestern Baseball brought to you by Holder Drug on the Rangers Sports Network, 105.7. Alva State Bank and Trust Company, older than Oklahoma, big enough to serve you and small enough to know you. We love to give back to our customers. Did you know Alva State Bank offers a great rewards checking account program? That's right. You can earn cash back or high interest with our Casasa accounts. We will even refund you up to $25 in ATM fees. How do I qualify? It's simple. Just swipe your debit card 12 times, sign up for online statements, and have one ACH credit or debit post to your account. Can I do it online? Yes. Just visit our website at www.alvastatebank.com to see if our Casasa Rewards program is right for you. We make banking easy. Whether you're at home, the office, or in your car, our online or mobile banking options help you juggle busy schedules and financial needs. We plant roots where others have branches. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC.
Holder Drug has been serving the community of Alva since 1952. When you are in need of medication, healthcare items, and more, look to none other than Holder Drug, Alva's local pharmacy. Holder Drug is locally and family owned and is always ready to serve you. They offer convenient drive through pickup as well as free delivery with your medication. They also offer a number of gift ideas for those special holidays. For more information, visit their website, www.holderdrug.com, or stop by 513 Barnes Avenue in downtown Alva. Community Bank has been serving Alva, Oklahoma, and the surrounding area since 1984. Community Bank was founded by local community members who wanted to ensure the banking needs of the community were being met. It has been our goal since inception to provide customer-focused services and community development. Our customers are friends, neighbors, and never just a number. We believe in investing in our community, and we pride ourselves in being your hometown bank. Community Bank, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Welcome back to Meyer Stadium as we open up our McDermott Insurance post-game show. As the Rangers fall here today in the doubleheader to Arkansas Monticello, and the Rangers now drop to 19 and six here at home. As again, losing both here to the Weevils this afternoon and evening. As uh, coach, uh, a tough one today for the Rangers. Uh, at this point, now you got to go out tomorrow. You've got to reset, and, and you've got to get one of these. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a chance we don't. Right. But, you know, there's still, uh, well, we got uh, two series after this one to go. I think uh, this was a tough uh, two games. You know, we, I mean, those are two good clubs, and uh, Monticello was just a little bit better both time, both games today. You know? yeah. So hopefully tomorrow we can come back and get on top of them and and do, uh, do get one of the three. And, uh, you know, because we've got, what, four or five teams now in the, in the thick of things for the top, and we want to stay as close to the top as we can as the season comes to an end. And it's tough because you look at both games, Rangers had, you know, good leads in both games, and obviously that early on, five runs is, you know, you're not saying it's over by that point, but you'd like to be able to hold on and kind of, you know, limit teams. And, you know, Arkansas Monticello explodes in game one uh, after only scoring two in the first three innings. Well, they did the same thing today. They picked up four in the first three and then, seven in the fourth and then two more in the seventh and two more in the ninth to uh, ultimately win it here today. Well, it's just a reminder that uh, any time that your team's at bat, you need to score runs, and, you know, as best you can. And, um, again, I, just, I, I'm not sad. I just, you know, I feel for the guys and for the coaches. But, uh, you know, there is tomorrow, and there's baseball and uh, coming up to finish the season out, and uh, we're a good team. We just got to put it together a little bit better than what we did with today. Yeah, again, Rangers, uh, final game of the series will be tomorrow at noon. With uh, We'll have our senior day ceremony at 1130. Let's go through our final numbers brought to you by Shirley Shine Car Wash. For the Weevils, 44 to the plate, 15 runs, 15 hits, 14 RBIs, one, uh, seven walks, four strikeouts. They left 10 runners on. Rangers, 38 to the plate, 13 runs, 12 hits, 12 RBIs, five walks, 16 strikeouts, 11 of those coming by way of Mercado again here this evening. And they also left five runners on base. UAM got one in the first, three in the second, seven in the fourth, two more in the seventh and the ninth. Rangers seven in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth, and did not score the rest of the way. As Mercado picks up the victory, he goes to three and three, went five innings. Uh, just two hits, two walks, 11 strikeouts, and 20 batters faced. Uh, McCaffrey will take the loss today, going in inning, one hit, two runs, one of those earned, two walks, two strikeouts. Uh, and, again, seven batters faced. Again, that's a look at your final statistics brought to you by Shirley Shine Car Wash. And now Arkansas Monticello leads the overall series 22-13, to 13, and they've now won five straight over the Rangers uh, with three a year ago and then now the first two of the series <coughs> here today. Well, you had just said something about that may have been the strongest uh, relieving performance you've seen uh, from a visiting team pitcher. And he really did shut the door on us. We didn't have much of an answer for him. No, we certainly did. And, again, just two hits, uh, again, for Mercado in those five innings when he came in. So a very impressive 